Yo, yo, what up, C10 Nation? This is Ronnie from C10 Talk. C10 Talk is one of those podcast things. We talk C10 trucks, tech, and people. That's right, people. Because it's the people that make the scene so rad ass. The trucks are cool, but the people are cooler. You can check out the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, iHeartRadio, C10Talk.com, and anywhere else you listen to your favorite podcasts. Thanks for checking out our latest video and being part of the C10 Nation. All right, all right, all right. How about all the way out in GA, Chaz Sosby, a.k.a. Super Rat Chaz, coming in. Uh, we love getting some East Coast love out there, and uh, I guess this is the South, Hot Lana. Chaz, welcome to C10 Talk. Uh, probably a long time coming. Love watching what you do. Uh, welcome, brother. Thanks, man. I'm, I'm proud to be here. Yeah, it's uh, I love your style. I really do. I, I think I'm going to blow you away on how much I, I dig what you do, what you build. And uh, you've, you've got a great eye for it. You're obviously a fanatic. Um, I guess, first and foremost, how did you come up with Super Rat Chaz? So uh, my brother has called me Little Rat my whole life. So I've been little brother, you know, and um, literally seventh grade, he made me my first uh, Gmail and it was Super Rat Chaz at gmail.com and from then on i've been super rat chaz and uh that's that was my instagram name uh, of course you know maybe him calling you rat is kind of like a little bit negative you're the little brother he's picking on you but I, you gotta think it's kind of cool if he, he called you super rat yeah I, yeah i guess super rat developed along the way and uh you know it's bad so i work for my family's business now and i still use that email you know 20 years later as my prime email i love it you could come up with something though. It's funny because even when I'm looking at it, it's like super ratchet, Arizona. You, you can come up with all, <laughs> I'm sure you could come up with all kinds of cool shit. Oh yeah. Okay. So, so your little, your brother got you an email in seventh grade, super rat Chaz. How did you get into these trucks, brother? So I've always been a car guy my whole life. Um, when I was a kid, I was taking tires and wheels off of little model cars. Um, and it's funny, I was always an actual a muscle car guy, never liked trucks. Um, my college roommate still talked to him every day. He was a truck guy. I graduated college in 2014. Um, and up until then, I teased him, man. I said, dude, nobody likes trucks. And uh, I've, I've had a 69 Camaro since I was 15 and still have the car. Wow. Um, and so uh, 2015 was the first year I bought my first Chevrolet truck. Um, a guy came into my office and he said, Hey, my dad has passed on and I've got a 65 Chevrolet truck. I'm going to sell. And he priced it to me and I felt like I had some money to be made in it. So I was doing it as a business opportunity really to buy and flip the truck. Um, and I bought it and I actually converted it over to a four speed and just fell in love with trucks. So my first truck was a 65, uh, C10 little back window and dude, it's been downhill ever since. Uh, in fact, my Camaro has not run in two years because I've just got into trucks. That was my next question is how much love does that Camaro get now that you've got uh, and, and the thing is, and we're going to get into it for the audience. There's not just one truck. There's just not two trucks, maybe three. Nah, there's a, if you like, like a good Dorito, you can't just have one. Well, uh, he's fallen in deep and uh, I think it's cool that at least you still have the, the 69. So your roommate was into trucks. Was he into Chevy trucks? Was he into other, what kind of oh, trucks yeah. was he into? Yeah. He had a 66 big block C10. Uh, he actually works for Haggerty now and we're still truck nuts. He still has a 66 big back window fleet side today. Now your 65, I assume is went on. Cause I don't see you post that. Yeah, that I, it, yeah. It, it's long gone actually. So it was a business deal then. Yeah. Short period of time. Okay. So when were you a GM guy being a Camaro guy and uh, was GM in the family or cause when you say I wasn't into trucks that you could have been into, you could have got into all kinds of different trucks. So GM was actually quite the opposite. Um, uh, I'm, I'm 29 years old and, and 28 years of my life. My dad has been a manager of a Ford dealership in fact. Um, so for me uh, it's always been kind of a battle between us because he says Ford raised me. And I, I like GM. It's always been that way. Um, you know, muscle cars. And then I was into Corvettes. I really loved Corvettes for a while. And really just because the business opportunity, you know, you can buy from both ends of the market. You can find people that have plenty of money and they're willing to get rid of it cheap. 
because they don't need the money and they sell it. And then you find people that have money and they want exactly what you've got and you can sell it for prime. So I did that through college to make ends meet for fun. And uh, it was cool to have a fun car during college. And uh, man, since college, it's just all trucks. So like C6, C7, what, what was your go-to? So my favorite and will always be my favorite C5, Z06. I, I just think they're the best bang for the buck. Uh, the, the timeless flip up headlights. I love that. Still has the round tail lights. I just love them. I love a C5. I had a C6 um, and, and it was fun, but I'd still go back to the C5 any day. And C5, is that like 91 first year? No. So C5 is 90 seven which was the first generation of ls in fact um 97 to 04 okay yeah uh when i when you i think of a yellow uh, a lot of times there's a yellow in that you know i see those and they still have some good curves to them uh, oh yeah yeah so they that's made the, a they made a funky uh yellow with red interior co6 it was a it was awesome it's so ugly but it was awesome yeah, you know, in the mid to late 90s, Baywatch was on. And so there was a lot of yellow vehicles. There was a ZR2 S10 truck that they made. And I mean, you know, Ford Ranger was making yellow. Toyotas were making yellow. There was a lot of yellow, a lot of yellow in the 90s. Oh, yeah. I, I wonder if it'll come back. I always kind of laugh when you think about like one of your trucks that you have. It's probably one of my favorites that you, are you again, I love your style. You pick them out really good. You start really, really well. So when you start well, it's hard to, uh, you know, to F it up. Uh, it's, it's one of those things where you, you, those trucks. So think about an okra truck. So my first truck was an okra and white, like your little shorty that you have. Mine was a K10 long bed. I just, I always think like, could you imagine like a 503 green, an okra, something like that on a new Chevy truck, a new GM truck, you'd lose your mind. You know what I mean? Even if you saw like okra on really an OBS, I, you just don't see it. Uh, obviously a square, obviously 67 to 72, you see it all the time. So it's funny what we accept and what we are okay with, but to think, you know, and we see some people that'll take a newer style Tahoe, a newer style truck, and they'll put, you know, some of those old colors, obviously orange is, you know, pretty safe, but, uh, but really a 503 green and okra, something like that. It's just not probably going to work out all fit. that well. No, it don't yeah, fit. It don't fit. Yeah. So you, you have the 65 and, and what happened? You started just tinkering around and you're like, dude, I like this. How, yeah, how did so you convert? We, we actually, uh, my, my first, well, I call it a keeper truck, but I sold it too. But the first truck that really pushed me over the edge, okay, this truck really got me to dive in. Um, Ernie Buckley, Buck C10 on Instagram, great guy. I still keep up with him today, man. We're actually really close. Um, he sold me a, a 503 light green 68 at Emerald Coast Cruise in Panama City, uh, 2016, I think. So it hasn't been, you know, all that long ago. And man, I fell in love with the truck. I drove it for a couple of months and then decided I was like, I'm going to swap it. You know, I'm not a, not really a mechanic by any means. Um, but I was like, I'm going to try my hand at it. I enjoy to pedal. And uh, I guess working on them like that will really, will really dive you into them. And, and I've really enjoyed it ever since then. Oh, that's cool. I mean, and like you said, you're not a mechanic, but I had some conversations with, um, a guy today, you know, regarding that, that you and I talked about before we went on the air about how some of these guys and in, in these other pods that we do and these other forums and stuff is these other guys make fun of the GM guys. They make fun of us. Okay. It's like, Hey, you know, really the Dodge guys, the international guys, even some of the Ford guys are like, you guys can build a truck out of the catalog. And it's like, yeah, we can. And the LS is like the best motor, like ever it, it, you think about, it, it's like a three fifty was like could you ever get any better right i mean it's the most produced you can find a part anywhere you break down the side of the road you could you could like there's you can walk 10 minutes and you're gonna find the part you need in theory well the, and then the ls comes along and you're like holy shit it's even you know it's even better right oh, well yeah. so then yeah there's a little animosity there when they you think about some of that stuff so i think that that reinforces the like part of it for most people is hey i could pretty much 
build a truck, you know, uh, whether it's through a catalog, Amazon nowadays, and you know, what we're going through when it comes to parts that we're a little different for, for today's day and age, but we have a lot of accessibility. We have a lot of uh, tutorials on YouTube, so you could figure it out. If you've got, you know, uh, a few tools, you're going to be able to figure a lot of this stuff out just by, uh, researching and talking to people. And then that's, what's so cool is if you find out that you get to know some of the guys within the scene and you start talking to them, whether you're trying to find out how to fix something, break something, buy something, you're gonna be like, Hey dude, that dude's pretty cool. I like that guy. And next thing you know, oh, yeah. five years later, or for you, six years later, you're like, look around and you're like, shit. I mean, I still kind of talk to some of my old friends from college and stuff, but last time I looked around me, it was like all truck dudes. Yeah. It, it's man. That's one of the things I love about, I guess the, the truck market you can call it is there's nobody else that's like family. And, and my, my parents don't understand it, but when I say my truck family, I mean it literally, I, you know, I don't get to see everybody every weekend, but some of these big shows, when we go to the get down, when we go to Brian Ashley show at SCTN, uh, battle in Bama, any of these big shows, man, there's guys that I look forward to seeing every time. And I drive home thinking, man, I had a great time this weekend seeing my buddies, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You guys have a really good, uh, just getting back from battle in Bama. You guys have a really good thing out there. Uh, what you guys have going on and your involvement with C10 club, Georgia. I, f I feel like that's really helped things, you know, kind of just in the last few years, your ability to kind of rally the troops up, you guys have really cool merch and, and the activity of, C10 Club Georgia. I, I mean, I see it from out here, right? I mean, I initially knew Robbie was in it. Uh, and then I know Kale from, you know, C10 Club Alabama and what you guys have going on there. It's, it's cool. And, and I'm cognizant about that kind of stuff because I, I don't want to sound stupid, but I really try not to be so much AZ California, Texas, because that's so easy. Uh, sometimes I feel like I almost have to like say, man, I, I ever really talked to one of my local small friends here on the pod or whatever it might be, because I I'm always focusing on like the big, big picture. And sometimes I take it for granted. I'm like, Oh man, I should, I should reach out to Dino or Sam or, you know, uh, big 10 Bowman or somebody, because I want to reach out to the, all you guys and what you guys have done out there, especially in the last, what I would say probably three to four years has really, you know, it's, it's put you guys on the map. So, so kudos to you. I have to give it up to Robbie first because Robbie, Robbie did a great job uh, setting up this chapter. Um, and he pretty much, you know, provided me all the tools for success. So kudos to Robbie first. Uh, he, he, he did it really well. Um, you know, he's got a wife and kids and, and I, I have a, a new wife, but no kids. And I've got tons of free time and I uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, I'm a people person and uh, it's been great. Good. Yeah. You guys are, you guys are doing it. Uh, your merch for you guys, where, where would somebody who, um, you know, lives in Arizona, California, Texas, Illinois, I, I don't care, Florida, where would they go? Do you guys have a website for that kind of stuff? Or do they just go to your page? Yeah. Just the Facebook page. Generally, um, our merch sales aren't consistent enough to really have a web page. I need to, I need to step up on that. So I need some pressure there, but, um, yeah, if any time there there's all type, all types of merch posted on our Facebook page, anything from shirts, hats, stickers, hoodies, uh, anything you could want is all the time available on there. One of the things that I think you guys have really done, and I, I don't know where, you know, it started, but um, uh, I deal with uh, big Casey Harris in North Carolina. They have a sticker. Obviously we saw you guys out at uh, the C10 fall revival, but you guys have the new square kind of the GM seatbelt style. You have the GA, uh, they have the NC. Uh, I know there's a FL Florida. There's AZ now, which I think is super cool because it's like, it's just like, well, the big, in the, so I'm in the, you know, obviously a firefighter in the fire department and then you have your local. So it's like the big picture is, okay, this is the C10 club. And then inside of that is who we are. You know, this is our home. And so I think that's really cool. One thing we did with like the C10 nation is we did C10, you know, Georgia, we did all the flags and that was a few years back. Um, and I, and I dig that kind of stuff. I dig that oh, yeah. just the homage part of it. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. so I think that that's really cool the way you guys have done that. And, you know, you could see a, a truck and then be like, Oh shit, that guy's got a, you know, he's got a GA 
sticker on his on his truck. So I so I think that's that's been successful for the C10 club for whoever have decided to run those that style of sticker or logo. Well, that that's that's one of the things I love about it is is you know several states have adopted that now uh, Texas and Mississippi and Louisiana, uh, Kentucky, Tennessee. Lots of guys, you know, and it's cool because, like I mentioned, these big shows, we can go out and I see a, a truck and it's kind of a universal logo. And I can say, hey, that logo is going to tell me where this guy's from. Yeah. And it's, it's been cool. Good, good. Yeah. Even just uh, I'll run into people here locally and, and sometimes I'll throw shirts at whether it's fire buddies or other guys that I know and they don't really they're not really in the truck world and people will come up to them. And uh, next time I see them, they'll be like man, three people have asked me, Oh, you know, Ronnie, or, you know, this, or you're in C tens or whatever. And just yeah. because of a shirt that they'll wear. And, uh, it's funny how we can make a big world smaller. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, um, going down the trucks, let's, I mean, where do we start? I mean, I've got the five Oh three green 68. That was, uh, I don't think that was, was that the first, that one that you said that you, you got, got a hold of and somebody, uh, sold you. So yeah, that's uh, that's the one that I bought from Ernie. Yep. Um, okay. And I I swapped it, and it's 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 kind of it's kind of funny story. So um, I was told that my called like six O? Is that the one you called six O? Yeah. Um, okay. I don't know if that truck ever really had a name. I, you know, that's something that's kind of caught on for me as time went on. Uh, I love nothing more than to be able to buy a truck, and the owner that I bought it from have a you know a neat catchy name, and me get to name the truck after him. That, that's one of my favorite things to do. Um, so that, I guess that's a uh, characteristic of mine. Um, Good. But, so, you, so you're naming that truck Ernie? Is that, are you, what are you, what are you naming? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give it that much credit. <laughs> uh, props to Ernie. No. Um, so I actually, I, I swapped the truck and I uh, took it to rod run just because it was more of a, a thing for myself. I was like, I'm going to see if I can take this truck to rod run. I had, I had, you know, six weeks to do it. All my buddies were like, no way. We literally cranked the truck the night before we left. It didn't really run right, but I had paid for a parking spot at Rod Run. And I was like, you know what? I'm taking it. And the first morning we get up there, unload it, drive it to the parking spot. And me and some buddies go grab breakfast. And the lot we park in is notorious for buying and selling. I did not take that truck to sell. Came back and there was kind of a joke price written on the windshield, a high price. And I was like, it can stay because if that truck brings anywhere near that, I'll sell it. And sure enough, Saturday night, a guy bought it. He still got it today. And he ended up putting a F one R pro charger on it with stock head bolts, stock rod bolts. And he drives the truck every day and beats the snot out of it. So it's kind of heartbreaking for me to see my truck somewhere else, but uh, it's, it's loved on for sure. I could tell you went through a lot of uh, just a really a, a low point and then just bought more trucks to kind of work through that therapy because uh yeah, I mean, I don't know that I can keep track, but let's just say we try. So the 65 one, let, let's say it's you've got to own it for at least three months, maybe six months and drive it. So let's go six months and drive it. So uh, I think we're up to two with the with 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 a C10 Ernie here. OK, yeah, and so yeah. so so we're up to two. Um, then there's a so it, it made me sick the night Saturday night, the night I sold it. I was literally sick in my stomach. And me and two buddies rode around the rest of the night looking for trucks at Rod Run to buy. It was Saturday night. So everybody leaves Sunday morning. And I was sick, literally just sick. And that's where I bought my ochre and white truck. I found this truck uh, on a back street uh, that had the, I guess the guy had given up selling it. And it was late, man. It was like midnight. And I, I took a picture of the, the number on it. And I called him first thing Sunday morning. And me and the guy struck a deal. And uh, his name was Ronnie Bates, I believe. And in fact, he still calls me. I, I talked to him probably two months ago. This has been 2016 and he wants to buy his truck back. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. That truck's sweet. And what you've done with it and how funny. So you literally hand off Ernie and buy Ronnie. Yeah. Like the next day, you have, that money yeah. burned a hole in your pocket. Well, yeah. And I went home with some cash in my pocket too. So it was well, and you went home with a really cool truck. I mean, I love that style that you have. And really you, again, I, I really dig your style. Less is more what you're doing. Your style of truck, obviously 67 to 72. You've got some squares mixed in there, but you know, a little bit of drop, the right caps, steelies caps, and, and just leave, you know, you got, you got to leave a lot of the stuff alone and that's hard for people to do. Well, used to the steelies and caps was like the financial savvy way to go. Right. 
Yeah, you know? not anymore. And not anymore, man. I, I, you know, I, I collect some hubcaps here on my wall, and and I got to thinking about it the other day. I was like, I'm ashamed of what some of these sets would go for, but I don't really want to sell them because they're, you know, getting irreplaceable. Um, but, yeah, you, you can order Americans and, and, you know, 20s for the same money as steels and caps now. It's rough. It'll be funny. It's going to cycle. Um, I tried to buy some welds and uh they 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 were a little pricey so og welds weld wheels and i was really surprised the even kind of a shyster situation um they were on facebook marketplace i wanted to buy them and then i reached out and the guy said yeah but unfortunately the price went up and i'm like who does that you already put a price on facebook and now you're telling me that the price has already went up so it's like they're gauging the amount of response that they get and then they jack up the price so i was like yeah whatever sadly, I'll, I'll wait to sadly, find another that's, set that's facebook marketplace as a whole boy do i miss craigslist I, you know it's amazing you know in the last you know two years craigslist is just phased out i don't even check it anymore and you know when i was in college i was on craigslist all day long yeah anything i could buy to flip uh to, to make ends meet uh, I, lo- I worked at the local bookstore on campus i mean literally anything i could do to make ends meet um, I guess he just kind of hustled to make things work. And, and where'd you go to Facebook, college? Uh, university of North Georgia here in okay. Kalana. Cool. So what is the okra and white? Do you have a name for that truck? I really don't. That, that was kind of pre names. You know, I've had that truck for, I guess, five years now Yeah, and never really named it sadly. Okay. Uh, I dig it. Um, what's, what are you doing with it? What did you do with it once you got it? So it's kind of my Sunday driver. I'll be honest. My, my taste in the last five years for trucks has evolved somewhat. Uh, I, I like it. It's, you know, it's an older repaint, but it is a repaint, more of a slick paint truck versus, you know, I'm a patina guy. That That's kind of where my heart has been uh, the last few years. Uh, number one, used to be cheaper. <laughs> you know, all these things were based, you know, financially for me because I don't have some, you know, tons of money. And so for me, it was always how much fun could I have with something for as little amount of money as possible. That's how I enjoy something. Um, and the market is, you know, you'll pay as much now for a good original paint truck patina as, as some slick paint trucks. And it's, my thought was, it's really hard for me to spend 10 or $15,000 on a really top notch paint job to make me want to drive my truck less. So that's where I kind of drive from. And to me, um, original paint, man, it tells the quality of the truck. You know, you see original rockers, you can tell so much about a truck and nothing patina is like GM lacquer original paint. I just love it. I'm a nut for it. Yeah. Yeah. And again, going back to our conversation with the colors that, um, we draw from like in the, in the case of the okra truck with Yellowstone, the, the patina, surface rust comes through and it gives it that that darker hue uh and then you get the the you know the black primer then you get the red oxide style primer and the cab and those colors just flow together and yeah it'll be i do think it's going to evolve i think the obs world we see will evolve into paint it will evolve into shiny wheels and i think everything that was happening in 1992 is going to happen again uh i don't know you know it will all change and there's different folks for different strokes and different strokes for different folks so it, it, yeah. it's going to be one of those things but you're right it's harder and harder to find that stuff it's hard to find good set of steelies and, and a decent set of caps and there are some guys who have created somewhat of a bubble. Um, I do think you have a cool set of caps, but that's nothing compared to some guys. Some guys, uh, they could fill up, like, I feel like warehouses of them. So, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it's pretty crazy. Okay, so you've got uh, you've got Rod Run Ronnie. Uh, you, you've bought that truck. You've got it. Then, then, then where does Betty Jean come in there? So, Betty Jean's pretty good ways down the line, actually. Um, so, I made my first trip to um um lone star throwdown lst and all right lst yeah man so uh, i never really i always liked the lay frame truck thing you know i'd seen it in pictures but man you go out there and you're just immersed in them <laughs> i left there and i was like man that's what i'm doing you know i'm gonna do it 
little did I have a clue at the amount of work that it is to get to that point. I quickly learned. Uh, so it's, it's kind of, it's kind of a wild story. Um, so I came home with my mindset that that's what I wanted. Um, literally two days later, a full Porterbilt project popped up in Ohio, um, complete AMD reproduction um, body, you know, brand new bed, everything, uh, full level three Porterbilt, all done. The frame was done, four wheel disc brakes, uh, accuracy levels in the box. Boyd's tank was, was in the back, but non EFI it had a 350 in it. It was a complete truck, but just very much still project form, but a lot of money was spent on this project. It's posted for $10,000. And I knew there was not going to be a better start for me. Um, so, so I called the guy up, his name's Matt. We still, Matt Cook, a uh, great guy. Uh, he, he was, it killed him to sell the truck. That was a, you know, a lifelong project for him. He had worked so hard on it, but he, he was tickled to death to see somebody going to finish it. So I bought the project and I knew that uh, even at that point, I knew that slick paint wasn't really uh, what I wanted for that truck. I wanted a good patina truck. So I came home and listed all the AMD sheet metal for sale on Craigslist. This was back when Craigslist was prevalent. And it was Sunday night at 1030. My phone rang and it was this older gentleman and he was wanting to know if I still had my AMD reproduction doors for sale. And I said, yes, sir, I do. And, you know, something just crossed my mind. I said, this gentleman's older and, and he might not be in the truck market. And, I, you know, he might not even know what patina is. So I just, I said, yeah, I've got the doors. We talked back and forth. And uh, I said, you wouldn't by chance know where a good, you know, patina original paint truck is, do you? And he said, well, I got one, but it needs paint really bad. And, uh, you know, we got to talking and he called it, um, what was it he called it? It was a Chevelle color anyway. Uh, and he called it that blue color. And, and I was like, ah, you know, I don't think that's original. I said, does it by chance have the trim down the side? This guy couldn't take a picture with his phone for nothing. And um, he said, yeah, it's got all the trim, custom cab truck, 67. I'm, my mouth's watering. At this point, I've walked a, a hole in my floor because I'm nervous. You know, it sounds like exactly what I'm looking, you know, for to put on this, you know, this frame. And the next day he sent me pictures. I couldn't wait to get that picture. His wife had to send the picture. And my jaw dropped when he sent me the picture. Uh, I was just blown away. And I called him back and I said, would you sell it? And he said, yes. And we, uh, you know, struck up a deal. And I could not get there fast enough that night after work to buy that truck. And uh, that's Betty Jean. Uh, Betty Jean, the name originated uh, from my Mimi. That was my Mimi's name, Betty Jean Black. Uh, she passed on in 2012. And I, I think she has a lot of influence on me growing up because we always went yard selling together and antique shopping. And my love for anything old really stemmed from her. Uh, I spent a lot of time with her during summers and, and she kept me when my parents worked. And uh, I, I had to name it Betty Jean. It was just too fitting, you know. So that was, uh, that truck was a learning curve. Still not done. Um, my buddy Chris Dyer has it now doing some bed floor work for me because I'm not a fabricator. Um, so he's, he's tidying it up for me, but it's close to being done. That's awesome. That's so cool. Now, did, did that guy end up buying a lot of the AMD sheet metal? He bought two doors. What the That's hell did it. he want the doors for? Dude, so we get down here, and this truck is just the most rust-free, mostly original paint. And I'm thinking, why in the world do you want my $200 a piece AMD doors so uh, I got ready. I just knew every all day long when my phone rang at work, I knew it was going to be that man calling to tell me that he's changed his mind because he priced the truck for $6,000 steal of a deal. And when I called him, I said, Hey, I was letting you know, I'm headed your way. And he said, come on, don't forget my doors. <laughs> I said, okay. So we get down there and uh, he looked over the doors and he said, they look good. And I, I didn't even have to look at the truck. I, when I pulled in the driveway, man, I, in fact, uh, Kale owned this truck at one time out of Alabama. He bought it from the original owner out of an estate sale. So it's funny. So Kale, Kale, so Kale owned it and then sold it to the old man. And then, and then this you got man, it from. Yeah. He, he kept it for all these years. In fact, if you go back on Kale's Instagram, there's a picture of it with his dog in the back in the driveway. And it says hashtag needs Porter built. So kind of a funny story. That picture was from. I don't know when on his Instagram, but, uh, in fact, when in the process of working on the truck, I sent Kel some pictures and he was like, right on, man, that's cool. 
Yeah, another good dude. He kind of I hadn't seen him or heard from him in a long time and Barn Fine broke down at at uh, Battle and Bama and Kale came to the rescue. So uh, I got to have a beer with him real quick before I headed off to the airport. So uh, good people and that's that you know that world that we live in where Kale and I would see each other. He came out to the get down and, and, you know, you drink beer and, you know, break bread and just have good times and great people. So it's kind of f- funny and fitting that, you know, that that truck at one point was his. Yeah. He's got good taste, man. Everything that guy's had is just hits my, my love for trucks spot on. He has got an eye for patina and he finds good stuff. I, I, I got to give it to him. He's got good taste. Yeah, he does. And I bought some parts from him too. So he, he knows, uh, when he buys some of those other things, whether it's a cooler here, a mud flap here, a hubcap over here. And yeah, he does. And barn find does too. barn find, find some crazy shit, man. Those guys are, uh, the thing about it is we take it for granted, but those dudes are working their asses off, you know, rubbaging through stuff, finding those stuff. You just don't, you don't get that lucky that many times. No, nah, man. But, but what people don't understand is guys like that keep the wheels turning for us because they provide a huge market for some of these parts that people are looking for. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, kudos to them. Absolutely. Cool. Okay. So I'm up to number four with the 67 Betty Jean. Uh, and that's just cause I got the 72, uh, well, is it a 71, 72 okra, uh, rod run Ronnie, you've got that one in there and it sounds like I went out of order. So then I've got a suburban, uh, and then I got a black square. So, Pick, pick the, let's, let's do uh you know, like uh price is right. Pick the square or pick the bourbon. Which one do you want to go with? So the next one was the suburban. Um, at, at this point in my, you know, truck habit, I had fallen in love with original paint. So I, I was seeking out an original paint suburban and I wasn't in any hurry. You know, I just, I knew what I wanted and I wanted it to eventually be bagged. And I came across this truck that was out of San Jose, California, originally. Um, and someone, and I, I wish I could get in touch with who put it together. I've yet to find out what shop did it. Um, but it's medium gold, uh, 70 suburban, uh, was done somewhere in Arizona, just a, you know, cheaper slam specialties, little air ride kit or air max, you know, does the job, man. I've, I've drove this suburban all over. Um, but it's just a, a cheapo air ride, just a blast. We, you know, when me and my buddies go somewhere, you can pile in you know, two rows deep in this and just have a ball. If you think these trucks are fun, get six dudes in a Suburban and see what kind of fun you have. It, it's a whole new level. I like to maybe have just me and five hot chicks, but if you, if you guys from Georgia want six dudes, that's, I'm okay with it. Maybe a couple guys from Alabama, whatever it takes, brother. You got to check out how we do it out here, man. <laughs> the funny thing is I get it, man. I've had a couple dudes, uh, obviously, uh, you know, up to five guys. Uh, we, the first trip we took with Yellowstone to LST, I think we had, uh, we had G breezy, my buddy goose and Johnny Oro. So that was at least four. And then we probably picked up one here and there. And I remember grinder jumped in at one point too. So yeah, we, uh, you have a lot of, a lot of laughs, uh, depending on who's playing DJ at this time and what's breaking at this time and what noise, what'd you hear? What'd you hear? I don't hear nothing. And you know, uh, John Oro's phone flew out at one point. So yeah, the memories are, the memories are, are awesome. So did you have a name for the 70 bourbon? You know, I don't, I'm you hadn't, yet, with you hadn't named never, that. Yeah. Yeah. I've never, I've never thought about this again. I, this truck was, I guess the suburban was before my, my name and thing started. Well, is it a boy or a girl? Mm, I'm going to go boy. The okay. Well, gold. I'm going to call it Jose. Cause you got it out of San Jose, but so you got the seven, <laughs> you got the 70 idea. suburban it's tan. I can go with tan. I just, Hey, I was like, if he says boy, then it's Jose. I, you know, if I guess yeah, if it's well, a girl, no, it could be Jose B. That's pretty fitting. I think I'm going to keep it. That's <laughs> all right. Uh, I, I think obviously the, your okra and white truck, uh, rod run, Ronnie, you, Somewhere in there, I saw that. And then I don't know where I saw your bourbon, but I remember reposting your bourbon and you, you do a good job of picturing these vehicles as well. When I say that, I say shooting a photo of it. I mean, you, you've got the color, you've got the light. And I remember the bourbon. It was just a really nice, um, you know, front side shot, the grill. And, and another thing that's funny for me is I'm such a 71, 72 guy that uh you know the evol evolution i should say is from 71 72 was 67 68 um and i had a 68 picacho and and the 69 70s just didn't get the love i love the 69 70 grill right now it's it's not going to be my overall favorite just because i'm such a 71 72 guy but 
But right now, period, you know, the period I'm in right now, I really dig the 6970 grill. So when I see your bourbon and I see that style, I see that stance and, you know, it just the wheels, everything. So uh, good job. I, I don't know that I've seen the interior. Is, it, is the interior OG? Uh, no, it's actually it all. It still has all the parchment door panels. The original the, the what's original in the truck is still pretty survivor, you know, really nice. But someone has recovered it with kind of a plaid houndstooth kind of off the wall color, not necessarily my favorite, but um, when you're looking for an original paint vehicle, you kind of got to buy what you can find. But I've, I've, you know, even, even four years later after having this, I'm still on the hunt for a set of parchment uh, seats for this thing. So anybody out there listening, if you got a set, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, that uh, I like that off white color. You get that. Uh, and I think probably in 70, you're going to get some decent scrolling in it as well. So Correct. Yeah. Uh, you'll probably get, you're probably looking, I don't know. Are you looking for two or are you looking for three? You're looking for the third row as well. Of course I'm going three. I want yeah. all three. Why wouldn't you? Find them, but I'm not going to be picky. If I can find two, I'll settle. No, no. You're the guy. It's like, well, if you got three, I might as well take it. I can always, uh, I'd rather have it and have it up in the mezzanine than uh, not have it at all. So That's yeah. Right. I'm sure there's somebody out there with some nice, nice parchment and, you know, worst case scenario, you could always redo it. Um, but there's probably somebody with some nice OG out there. You're right though. It's getting harder and harder to find. So, so I'm up to five with the suburban and then, uh, you know, again, I don't know if you got a, a, a name, black Betty, uh, whatever that black square comes into your life. Is that, I, I guess I should just let you run through what you still have and you run through the sequence for us. Yeah, so the black truck was actually bought it from a, a fuel customer. My family's in the gas business, and he came in one day, and he said he had the truck, and I went and checked it out, and pretty nice truck. Um, so I bought it. It was temporary. Uh, you know, lowered it and wheels and tires and actually sold it to Brad Gann. Uh, he lives, you know, relatively close to me out of Clover, South Carolina. Um, so, and I, I don't know. In fact, the last time I saw it for sale, Man, these squares are, are bringing such solid money. It was posted for, you know, 15 grand. And I think I sold the truck for 6,500, you know, and I thought I was Donald Trump. You know, I thought I did great on the truck. So it's amazing what this market's done. Um, but I, I'm, I'm trying to think for myself um, after the black truck. Um, let's see, probably Harlan, uh, my 73 uh, crimson red, my little square body. Uh, typically not a square body guy. Don't get me wrong. I have love for anything GM 1940 through 2021. Let's be honest it GM just has my heart. Um, but my love for trucks is definitely in the 67 to 72 always will be. But, um, I bought my 73, uh, Harlan from a guy I go to church with actually. Um, he, he hit me up on a Saturday night and he said, uh, my uncle is going to sell a 73. And as everybody's familiar in the truck market, you know, 73 and four were some of the worst trucks to rust. I mean, usually when you find them, they're just nothing left. Mm -hmm. uh, immediately, my mind goes to flat black, rough, you know, and I said, well, I'll help him sell it. I'll post in the page. I'll do what I can. I'll help him. He sends me a picture of it. And it's this crimson red 73. And my heart kind of fluttered a little bit. And I'm like, whoa, that's weird to feel that from the square, you know? So uh, Sunday after church, I went and checked it out and I couldn't believe it. The amount of original paint that this truck still had on it from a 73 uh, John Smith dealer emblem from Atlanta, still on the back. Just couldn't believe it. And uh, bought it in 2018. And really I paid way ahead of the market for this truck. Uh, you know, the squares just, they were on the up for sure, but they weren't what they are today. Um, I almost feel like the square body market has replaced nearly everything else. Um, in fact, I've had quite a number of people, you know, after this truck, Charlie Andrews for one nine thirty CAS on Instagram, everybody knows him for his styling. What a guy, you know, again, he, he, he fits that truck market. Perfect. That we talked about such a friendly guy, a welcoming man. What a dude. Um, so for the audience, that's uh, I just actually ironically posted on C10 nation. That's Pedro, the 73 GMC that Dell built with the Dell CSTs, um, the squares, and uh, that thing's on the ground. I don't know if he still has it, but that's who owned it. Um, and he's, I seen him, I think he still does, but maybe he doesn't. I think, I think he sold it. Okay. He sold it. And I know he had a blazer in a while. He sold that. So yeah. So, so I assume that Harlan was the owner. 
Yeah, Harlan was the owner. Yeah, he had bought it. Uh, the, I've got the little bill of sale in the glove box where um, his daughter signed it as executor of will in 1994. And Harlan owned it from 94 up till I bought it in 2018. So did he buy it from like the first owner? Bought it from the daughter after the original owner passed. So she just sold it in the dad's will. Oh, I get it. I thought you meant Harlan's daughter. So the daughter of the original owner, Harlan bought it from uh, from the original from owner. My- daughter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Through the will. Okay. So you're the third owner. You've got all the paperwork. Yeah. And has that become your favorite? Um, it's probably my most reliable because I didn't build it. <laughs> it's still original, right? So yeah. Uh, we, we came back from SETN last year and we had literally hadn't got out of the hotel parking lot, had the truck on the trailer. And uh, my buddy calls me and he's like, Hey, where you at? And I knew where this conversation was headed, you know, these truck trips and, and the breakdowns, uh, his name's Josh. And he said, Hey, my, my motor's locked down in my truck. You got room for me on the trailer. And I was like, yeah, you know, Harlan will make it back. So I backed Harlan off the trailer, just had got the AC fixed in the truck. Thank the Lord. And uh, so I drove it, you know, four and a half hours home with AC from Nashville with Josh's truck on the trailer. And yeah, I'd have to say this truck's probably the most reliable so far. Yeah. I, I mean, you, you said, thank the Lord. I, I think you need to keep doing that. Cause you, uh, you've got, uh, you got some good graces going on some good, good ones to start with. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's like you said, you're like, Oh yeah, I'll help you sell it. Or maybe this old guy has this truck. Next thing you know, you're just hitting home runs on these colors, you know, and, and, and not only the colors, but, you know, the, the quality of the, of the rust or lack thereof. Um, so, so yeah, so Harlan gets in and, and, but you did a drop on Harlan, right? Yep. Yeah. McGoy's McGoffey, however you say it. Um, yeah. You no, know, it's just a simple four and a half. Uh, the rear's a flip kit and a one inch block. I can't really seem to make myself cut the bed support in some of these trucks. I like to lower them so that everything is reversible. If one day when I'm older and gray headed, decide to go the other way, everything is reversible. Um, but yeah, just simple, you know, I'm, I'm, I thought about doing the chassis thing on this truck and I was like, nah, nah, I'm going to keep this one just simple. Like you yeah. said, simple or that uh, I was talking to my, uh, Steve McGoy up at, uh, LS Fest West and I had interviewed him a few years back and he's like, God, we sell so many of those damn freaking C10 kits. He's like, that's, we sell so many of those things. I'm like, yeah, there's nothing to it. A flip and a spindle yeah. and rock and roll and you're not going to get a shitty ride. You're going to keep a good ride. You put the right shocks on it for sure. So, so Harlan, uh, Harlan's your go-to that Harlan is just a, an absolute beautiful truck. And for the audience, um, Chaz is going to do a little walk around at the end. We're in the shop. We're on the phone right now. We're doing the interview. And then I said, Hey, let's, let's knock out the interview and then we'll do uh, a little, uh, a little tour at the end. So trying to do that, especially when we have guys that, you know, have a few trucks and we can kind of show them off. So, all right. So Harlan comes along and then is the crew cab next or what was next? Yeah. Well, yeah, we'll go there. Um, so you know, I've always loved the Suburban. So then I set out and I said, I'm going to try a crew cab, just try something different. You know, um, I wanted to, I was going to come and swap one myself. Uh, here we are, not a mechanic. And uh, I, I kind of started doubting that. And uh, of all people, uh, Russ built, uh, Russell Cunningham. Uh, is that right? Russ Cunningham. Uh, yeah. yeah, Russ built out of Knoxville. Uh, we, we became buddies. What a great guy. Um, and he hit me up one day and we were just talking and he said, so what's next? What you got your eye on? I know you got your eye on something. I said, man, I want a crew cab. I want to come and swap crew cab. He said, you want to drive one home? And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you know, that's always a benefit. So uh, I'm sure you guys know Adam Ponder. He, he sent me Adam's number. I think it's AT, AT Ponder on uh, Insta Wiener. Yep. 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 So uh, Adam, we've become buddies. Um, and me and my buddy Nathan actually drove up there one day and, and bought a, a pair from him, a, a 75 Suburban that was Willoway green and white, killer Suburban. He still got it. And then the uh, C30 had a Cummins in it already. We, we kind of struck up a deal. I got lucky, drove it home and uh, tinkered with it a little bit, got a few things mechanically straightened out on it. And then I was like, I'm going to lower it. <laughs> and I did not price the Alcoas before. Oh, God, yeah. Idea. And remember, the, the funny thing about a, a dually is there's six wheels, not not four. Yeah, boy. Yeah. Remember that people. Um, so I spent nearly as much on wheels as I did on the whole truck. So that was really painful. Um, got it lowered, loved it, man. Drove it for a while. Um, actually we had a toys for tots drive with uh, a local group here out of Atlanta 
and met a guy, uh, Colton Powers. He owns it now. Uh, we were just talking. I had Betty Jean there, and he said, man, I want to do a, a Cummins crew cab. And it, it had crossed my mind to sell it, which I don't do that very often. And I, I told him I had one that I was considering parting with. And, you know, he just fell in love immediately, showed him a couple of pictures, and it was on. Uh, so that was on Sunday. I think Wednesday we got together. He came over, and, man, he drove it home Wednesday night. And the kid loves it. He's been rocking it ever since. So it's, it's well-loved, Don, but it's in Monroe, closer toward Atlanta now. Do you have, did you ever have a name for that or just the C30? Um, you know, maybe I didn't, man, I'm failing. Oh, Everett, Everett. Yeah, it was Everett. So it had an original Everett Chevrolet badge out of Hickory, North Carolina. So yeah, I named it. Everett. It's funny now that you say that, I remember you posting that. So yeah, that's a, and I love that truck. I really, I really, really did like that truck a lot. And uh, you know, it it's, was, it was a little rusty, you know, rough around the edges, but, um, man, it was cool. The, the Cummins, it had a, um, you know, standard Cummins transmission. Uh, I forget what, what trans they are. Oh, yeah, NV45, NV45. Yeah. So it had a five speed. No, it was an automatic. Um, oh, that's like, uh, yeah. The I NV, what they call it. It NV yeah. once. Yeah. They're horrible. I, well, they're not horrible, yeah. but I had one in my 96 and they're not the best. Yeah. They, that, that's one of the reasons that if the truck would have been a five speed, like Bowman's, I would have been all over it. I would have kept it. I would have loved it way more. Started pricing the five speed swap and, you know, you kind of got to be cautious of, you know, what you've got in a truck versus market value. And I knew that a transmission swap wasn't, wasn't going to work. Um, but I'll tell you that the next, the, the reason that got me, you know, thinking about selling it, um, I'm sure everybody knows level seven motorsports. Uh, these guys, Robbie, again, Robbie's put these guys, uh, you know, uh, on the scene uh, nowadays, Robbie's gave them a lot of publishing and uh, what those guys are doing, man, Jesse. Wow. You know, he has caught my eye. Uh, the, the pro tour and shootouts that's going on now, man, has really caught my eye. And, you know, don't get me wrong. I love the bag thing, but I tried that. So this next thing caught my eye and I was like, yeah, that's what I want to do next. But I knew it was, you know, more than likely I'm going to have to sell a truck uh, mm -hmm. to make it. Sure. So that one, that one wound up on the chopping block. And um, I, I knew I wanted a again, a patina 67, eight and, uh, all, all time favorite truck, the 68 50th anniversary. That is just, that is my weak spot, man. Everybody has a, you know, a weak spot and that's mine. So I uh, kind of set out wanting to build one of these trucks and uh, my, my college roommate that, that I teased so long for liking trucks. One night he sent me one on Facebook marketplace. It's uh, $1,800 in a, a, a state sale been posted for just a few hours short wheel base. Awesome truck. Dude, you so, have uh, a lot of, you like fall off into a pile of shit and there's gold bars underneath it, dude. I've got lucky a time you, or two. You've yeah. got some good luck. Good, good. Yeah. So, so I went and bought the truck. It was, it was pretty rough, pretty rusty. Uh, the guy wound up saying, man, we need it gone today. If you'll give me 1200, you can have it. And I was prepared to pay 1800. No problem. So I bought this truck for $1,200. And I was like, you know, is this the truck that I'm going to do it out of? It's fairly rusty. I, I've never really done much rust repair on trucks. When you say rust, what kind of rust? Um, inner and outer rockers, uh, cap supports were pretty rough. Okay. Uh, bottom of the fenders had some, some pretty bad places in them. I mean, pretty, pretty edgy, you know? Okay. Um, but I mean, literally it wasn't two weeks later. Uh, my, my, my buddy that helps me run the club here in Georgia, Zach Carver, uh, his dad sent me uh, a local truck. They they work at Ronnie Thompson Ford in LJ, so kind of northwest Georgia, and um, sent me over a long wheelbase 50th that a local uh, person had, you know, just an older guy, and he was wanting to sell it. And, man, it was a long bed, but probably some of the best original paint and some of the best sheet metal that I've seen in a while. I got to thinking. I was like, well, really, the bed was the best part of the short bed and this truck, the cab forward, man, the sheet metal is really good. So I took off to LJ and bought that truck. And at that point, that's where my idea started coming from, where I was like, I can take two and make a really good truck. Um, so I, I did just that. Um, I've been working on this truck. The name's Rody. The, the guy that I bought it from, uh, his name was Rody. He's passed on. I bought it from the estate sale. So he was a Harley Davidson tech and drove the truck everywhere was a kind of a hot rod guy it was a 
old school hot rod truck. It, you know, had a, a 327 that had been put in it. And uh, you could tell the guy that owned it really took some pride in this truck, but had been passed on and the truck had kind of sat. Uh, but Rody will live on. Uh, I, I had to name it that. Um, so who'd so, you buy it? Who'd you end up buying it from? So I bought it from the brother that was in charge of the estate sale. Oh, okay. Rody's brother. Yeah. So has the protecto plate and everything with it. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a sucker for anything GM nostalgia. Um, but so that set out, I've been working on this truck probably, I don't know, three or four months now. Um, and, and shout out to Jesse at level seven. He has helped me out with a lot of parts so far. Uh, great source for parts. If anybody you want to give him a there. shout out, should we, should we, should we like do uh, one, two, three, level seven, go Jesse. Yeah. I, one, I, I, two, I will, three, level, level seven. seven. <laughs> go Jesse. I like, I yeah. like me some Jesse and, and, uh, he does some rad shit too. Yeah, he really does. And, and kudos to Sean, his wife, man, I've taken a lot of her time in the last couple of months. What a job she does, you know, balancing that shop they have blown up, right? So, I mean, they're wide open right now. They've got a killer business going that their vibe, what they're doing is just phenomenal. Uh, and she balances, you know, work. She balances wife. She balances kids. Kudos to her. I see that from a, you know, business standpoint. And I got to give that some props because she For probably sure. doesn't get as much as she deserves. So, you know, Jesse, hey, you got a good one. Yeah, and um, she's a sweetheart for sure. So they have, uh, they've really helped me out. Um you know, decided to go cool overs on this truck, wanted to do something a little different than the bag thing I'd tried before. Um, so it's, it's again, been a learning, learning curve, but it's been a good one. I've learned a lot. Okay. So, so roadie long bed 50th uh -huh. rusty long short bed 50th. Mm -hmm. What chassis are you buying a brand new chassis? What are you doing? No, I actually, so it's uh, I bought a, a short wheel base, just a, a donor chassis. Um, and started assembling it, uh, just a standard, you know, GM chassis, had it blasted and powder coated. Um, shout out to Ride Tech, full Ride Tech coilover kit, man. Their fit and finish on that kit really transforms the capability of a factory chassis. And for, for much less money than a chassis. So for some of these guys like me that are more budget oriented, it's a really good opportunity to have a truck that can perform pretty high level for a sub $6,000 price point which is half of what a chassis would cost. Without a doubt. I mean, I'm running ride tech in orange slice. I love it. I think it handles phenomenal. Um, uh, you know, it, it might be a little bit of time, but it, it goes in quick in a weekend. You can put the whole ride tech in without a doubt. Oh, yeah. So yeah, man. It, it is, it is a sweet setup. So, so you, you've got a chassis, you found a donor chassis, you're going full ride tech. You've got, uh, you know, a combination of, of roadie and rusty. You're putting it together. You're going to put everything else together and sell what's left of rusty or no yeah so i actually did today it's a funny oh. thing so i sold it uh i had a buddy come over last night and we were putting the old cab back on the long bed frame and he got to looking at it and he goes you gonna sell this truck and i said yeah i'm getting it ready to sell for the swap meet you know we're having a big c10 club georgia swap meet uh in a day or two and uh i said yeah that's the goal i'm, I'm i've got to get one out of here i'm running out of room you know um he said how much you want for it and i told him and we were pretty close. So I sold it to him. Cool. Um, and you know, you know what, if he decides to put it back together, which is going to be fairly simple, you know, everything bolts back together and he sells it. I hope he hits a home run. Uh, yeah. so I'm all about it. So, so the, you took the short bed from rusty and you had a long bed from roadie. Did you cut, is he going to cut that long bed or how he talked about it? He, he talked about maybe being a learning curve. Uh, you know, he's like me. He's not much of a fabricator. Oh, I get it. So Rody's original long bed will stay with Rusty. Uh, well, technically, Rody was the short bed. And then Rusty, uh, Rody is the short bed originally. And then the really solid truck was just the long bed that I bought. But it's going to stick with the name Rody. So I took the cab front clip from the long bed and the uh, short bed from original Rody and making one. Okay. So now I get it. So I probably threw off the audience and obviously myself, but the, the original truck that came from the estate sale that was rustier than you thought was roadie. Mm -hmm, correct. Oh, okay. Okay. So I messed that up. So, so then that makes a little bit more sense. Okay. So, so you've got a short bed chassis and, and it is going to stay roadie. What power plant, what wheels, or what can you tell us? Well, it's not super secret squirrel stuff. I mean, some nah, of it is. I, and... I, I ain't no secret guy, man. All right. Everybody's, you everybody's never know. Family. Everybody's family in this truck world. Um, so 
Yeah, full ride tech, um, Willwood brakes front and rear, um, LS3, uh, T56 Magnum. Uh, Jesse kind of talked me into that one, and and uh, it's a good move. It's not the cheapest move, but I think it'll pay off in the end. I'm pretty excited about a manual truck. Um, Boyd's fuel system. Um, other than that, pretty well. Just going to put back together a you know junky patina body that's sadly going to have a lot of money dumped into it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's but that's the style. That's cool. Do you know what style wheel you're going to run? Well, so I'll be honest. You know, me being steels and caps. I set out for this truck to be super unassuming. That was the original, you know, mindset for me was I want to be able to play in this truck um, and, and it just not look like it. So, you know, steels and caps was my, my heart at first. And, you know, talking with Jesse, everything kind of snowballs. Well, if, if you, you know, if you've got this and this, well, you need this. And the next thing you know, you know, 14 yeah, instead of you're going to need some big brakes that aren't going to fit. <laughs> yeah. And that, I'll be honest. That's, that's kind of where I'm at in the project right now is, is the 14 inch brakes are requiring a, a minimum 18 inch wheel. And I really want to drive this truck. I want to enjoy it. I want to put some miles on it. I didn't paint the first inner fender. I didn't paint the firewall. I am truly doing a patina, you know, driveline restoration on this truck and I want to enjoy it. So I'm fighting myself with wheel choice right now because I, I love the look of some forge lines. I don't want to spend that kind of money on some. Uh, they're, they're the best looking wheel out there, man. Jesse's wheels on his square. Oh, they're hot. Um, but, oh, might not be in my budget. Uh, right now but that that's kind of where i'm fighting right now is is what wheel do i want have you thought about doing uh like a, uh, an 18 style stilly that you can fit a bigger brake and then give it that og look i mean you're going to go a little wider but that'd be kind of cool and you might I, i'd say you might go on the cheap you can't anymore but you could probably go on it's a little cheaper yeah i've actually got a super nice set of polished you know 10 and a half inch poverty caps for a 68 so that cost is already encountered and yeah i have i, I really thought of that i haven't you know seeked out uh a truck to to have an 18 inch steel wheel yet i've literally that's that literally i thought about that this week uh, that that may be an option uh that's not terribly expensive so i'm, I'm going to look into that next yeah, maybe even like a, you know, a mob steel, a wheel of antique. Somebody will make you a steely that you could run uh, and get your big break. And then I, I, the only thing I would say is make sure you pop those caps every time you race, because that's the last thing you want is, a you know, maybe back in the day, you know, or you find a, a scrub pair that's for racing, you know, and, and uh, yeah. maybe an, you put you pop the shinies on there for the show, because that's the last thing you want is a cap uh, flying off and you know, running down the, the racetrack, but okay. So, so roadie is, I love the name. I even more so that you're going to, you know, beat the pavement with it. So that's the current madness, right? I mean, cause I kind of seen you've been doing some of that with, and that truck from, from social media, the, the patina and everything about it looks really nice. Yeah. So my, my goal is to hopefully drive it SETN. Uh, that that's my goal there. Uh, that'll be uh, July 8th this when we're leaving out. So that's coming up pretty quick. Um, so I've been trying to hit it pretty hard lately. Yeah. So a little plug there, ninth and 10th July, uh, what the biggest miss biggest East of the Mississippi, uh, Brian Ashley's thinking well over a thousand this year. And yeah, you have, I think till June, like Six. 9th, 10th, 6th to pre-register. So, and, and, you know, me and Brian have become pretty close over the last year or so. And man, last time I talked to him, he's got over 500 pre-registered. So let's go people. This thing is going to be huge. And, and kudos to him for the work he puts in uh, to that show, because for us out here, it's, it, you know, that all GM, man, it hits my heart right where I, I love a truck show. Um, that Nashville is such a cool area for it. The pre-show on Friday night is a ball. Uh, that, that truck show just hits it perfect for me. I, I enjoy the, you know, the BS and in the parking lot, you know, in the hotel and, and the, the pre-show. I just love everything about it. Yeah. And like you said, we've, we've, we've hit it a few times on this episode. It's just, you know, the trucks are cool, but the people are cooler. So, uh, you get a lot, a lot of like-minded, uh, fellas around and, and, uh, some cold ones and it's, it's a really good time. So again, for Brian, that's going to be the Southeastern truck nationals and, and, uh, reach out to him, get, situated so you can get pre-registered you've got uh june 6th and 
uh, that that helps him out. So we always joke with him. That's the biggest east of the Mississippi. So we I always kind of give him a little bit of a ribbing on that, and that thing just gets bigger and bigger and good for him. Um, okay. Well, speaking of shows, what's your is that your favorite show? Do you have a favorite show that that you like to attend? You know, um, we went to the get down the last couple of years, and that's been a ball. So it's cool to get out to uh, West Coast scene. I think a lot of my style kind of falls in West Coast scene more. Um, I have to say that I, I, maybe I'm bringing a little West coast to the East coast, maybe. Um, but the way y'all's trucks, you know, patina perfect with beautiful rust free sheet metal. It just, it hits my heart in the special place. And for me to get to go out there and, you know, don't get me wrong. I love the, the vendor section of the get down. I love seeing these trucks that are just, you know, they're twelves, man. They're amazing. But then to go out and see how wicked, some of the guys that just drove there, man, the, the West coast scene is, is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's cool. And, and, uh, I kind of like it. Like I had a chance to go to, to, um, battle in Bama. And so it's, it's different flavors, right? Different strokes for different folks. And it's so cool to see that, you know, a little bit of different stuff now and then. So, so it's cool to hear you come out here and look at our stuff. And then, you know, we go out, you know, a truck that you and I were Googling over and, and, and I, and, was at uh c10 fall revival and that guy had that 72 orange uh Matt Clinard. dude yes, yes. And, oh. and we were both I, I knew i was like oh stay away and he's like is it for sale and and he i said it's for sale but he wants a lot of money and then i i think you know i think i kind of said this is what i think he's asking and you were like you you kind of gave me the sanford and son you know because it was like oh my god you know and yeah so now I, i've got to meet him and he does the hubcaps uh where he does the inlays and uh really good family guy and 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 then he tells me and i interviewed him on that episode on that pod and he tells me how his dad and the post office and his uncle wanted the truck and his dad got it. Now he's got it. I'm like, why would you ever sell this? How many trucks yeah, do you man. have? And so I think, I think maybe he, I don't know, maybe I even talked him out of it. Cause it, you know, I think you did, dude, yeah, I'm like, what, what you are you and, thinking? And, well, I don't blame you, man, because some stuff like that's irreplaceable. You know, don't, you know, the money doesn't mean anything compared to what something that belonged to a family member does. So I'm, I'm one to fall in love with something and not sell. So I'll talk anybody out of selling something. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, speaking of selling something, you've got to get rid of some stuff. You can only keep, I'm going to give you one, but really two, because I know you're going to struggle with one. So you can only keep two. What, what, what two are you keeping? Uh, number one, got to be at least Betty Jean, uh, just because that truck has some significance to me. Uh, it was one of my first, you know, just all out you know, trucks I put together a lot of myself. Of course, I didn't turn every nut and bolt. I'm not going to claim that I did, but worked on it a lot. Um, so that truck has got some significance for me. And then, oh man, I don't know. That's hard. That is a hard question. I guess this is why I have more than one or two trucks. Well, you um, think about that and let's keep on Betty Jean. What's your plan? I mean, you, you said it's really not done. Uh, small back window, 67. Uh, patina style what's your oh i mean is this something where you want to you're looking for you know uh, just a show truck uh uh you know maybe a hot rod power tour truck what what do you have a goal with it that you really want to get or just well so just love it and honest, drive it so to be honest i hit the truck pretty hard for a year or so and uh made battle in bama it really wasn't ready to go but me and robbie you know robbie kind of talked me into it and he's like dude let's go and I was like, all right, that's fine. Um, so we took it and it's one of those things where you work on it so hard when you come home, I just kind of backed away from it for a while. And the truck sat dormant um, in an unfinished state for, man, I'm embarrassed to say, but probably a year. And I, I was just kind of sick of it. I was mad at it. There's so much work. Every, everything you do to relocating hood hinges to, to moving inner fenders, just nothing was, nothing was like an easy Saturday and go out and do this on the truck. Everything was just required throwing a wrench at least once. And um, I got really tired of that. So, um, so I got it, you know, I end up heart fab inner fenders fit really well. Had to change over to the Porterbilt hood hinges. I tried to go a few other ways and, just so much like you but again we can build these trucks somebody like me you know can put a truck together at home because of these manufacturers that are making everything 
So, um, Chris Dyer, Chicken City Hot Rods on Instagram is is doing some bed floor work for it, and honestly, it's really close to being done. So I, I hope to have it at SETN as well. I just want to get the truck out there. To be honest, at this point, I worked so hard on it, and I just want to be able to drive it. I want to be able to enjoy it. Um, again, a little bit of that West Coast feel out here, um, and and. Uh, I just want to enjoy it. I don't know that it'll be a power tour truck. Uh, maybe. I hope it's, you know, I hope it's that reliable. It's 604 L80. Um, it should be. But, uh, yeah, I just, I'm just ready to enjoy it at this point. My hat's off to you. I mean, um, I'm I'm kind of dealing with a truck like that right now, and I explained it to my friend. I said, what happens is these trucks, they get everything a guy's got away from what he can give, you know, family and, and faith and food and, you know, work and whatever they've got, right? So they've got – They've got 20% to give to this truck. They give probably 35. They get under a crunch for a show. Uh, this particular truck is SEMA. And then they get done. They reach the finish line and the truck looks good for the show. And, and this particular truck, uh, the guys even told me, I, I almost hates it. Um, and, and it's funny because it's like 92% done. But those 8%, they just, it's, it's like, I, I don't have the time to give it. I don't, I, I, it sucked every ounce of it out of me. And, you know, I don't know. I, I always kind of say Sam Castronova is one of those guys where I, I feel like he should almost, people should pay him to just be the eight percenter and finish things off or, or really, I mean, I, I love it. You know, you find all the little things and you, you go through it, but, but I've been there, you know, where you don't even Yellowstone, we, we got it to, I think we finished it at, 3 30 and left at 5 30 you know and and then yeah. and that's just finishing it to get to the first lst then it gets home and then you're just tired of it and then it sits forever and then you're like well i gotta take it to this show so then you get back on it if it wasn't for shows i don't think we get anything done so shows are great for that yeah. um but 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 it can wear you out yeah man absolutely yeah the the show thing though is is, is awesome because it gives you a deadline it gives you a reason to push yourself so i always try to set something like that whether it's realistic or not i can work towards it yeah i tell people too man you you hate it but you love it because it pushes you to get to where you want to get done and at least to a point to where you can go and have some pride in what you're building and then and then you might take a little bit of a break but you know you've got your truck done to a certain point so they definitely push us and we've got kind of almost like you said with the manufacturers we, we've got more shows to go to than we can shake a stick at and now with yeah. things kind of busting loose after you know the corona covid issues we're going to see a lot more you know so so yeah it's it's a it's a, well, it's a crazy world we live in that's one of the things i'm looking forward to this year and and you know like we mentioned earlier in the show you know we we see 10 guys can build a truck from a box you know but at the same time it allows guys to have their own style built from their garage at home. And I love that too, because, um, you know, if you've got one shop that's rolling out an assembly line of trucks, they all tend to look alike. But yet when you've got all these guys that are able to be at home builders, man, every truck's got its own little styling point to, to it. And I love going to shows and seeing what other people have done. And my favorite thing is you, you get somewhere and you're like, what, what is this truck? This truck's, you know, nasty lay frame, bat, you know, billets and, and big brakes and LS the guy ain't even got social media. Right. Yeah. And you're like, what, what is this? Right. And, and I love that. That's one of the things I love. You get to shake a hand, meet a new friend and tell him, Hey man, kudos, you got a killer truck and you've got some serious talent. So that's another reason I love it is, is everybody can do their own style. Do you have a show that you haven't made it to yet that you really want to hit? Hmm. Well, Shout out to Josh McPherson, C10 Club Florida. He is killing it right now. And he just announced the other day, um, 2022 is going to be the uh, Sunshine Showdown. So that one's on my radar. Keep up uh, an eye for that. That show is going to be awesome. Florida has like the greatest weather anybody could ask for. Um, so that'll be, uh, if I'm not mistaken, in March of 2022. So that one looks like a good one. Um, yeah, I haven't made it to any of the pro touring uh, events yet. Um, a tricky uh, billet, Arnie, man. Hey, keep it up, dude. You're doing awesome. I can't wait to make it to one of those events. Um, and, and that would be, I guess, a, a bucket list event for me. Well, and you'll be able to, you know, you'll not only be going to the, to the event, you'll be probably driving your truck, right? I mean, that's a plan. Yeah, that's, that's kind of the goal. Uh, okay. I be able to, 
I want to be able to beat on this truck. Now, whether I really do autocross it or not, you know, even if I drive to the post office, I want to be able to beat on this truck. Nice. Yeah. Where's he going? Oh, shit. He's just going to deliver the mail. God damn. He's in a hurry. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell's going on with Chad? Is he pissed off? No, he just got that race truck. He wants to really put it down. Did you say what? Oh, you're going to put an LS3 in that? Yeah, it's a a vengeance cammed LS3. I worked at Vengeance here in Georgia for a short period of time. They're a big LSX, you know, performance leader out here on the East Coast. Uh, so one of their full cam kits. Um, other than that, pretty, you know, old square ports are hard to beat. Uh, you know, I, at the period in which I worked at Vengeance, this chaotic cam that's in this LS3 was pretty prevalent. And, man, most of the fifth-gen Camaros that were running this cam were, you know, making 490 wheel cam only, which if that's not enough motor for this truck, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I don't think it'll need any more. So I'll keep it right there for right now. All right, cool. Do you have a truck or a builder that you really, uh, let's go with a truck. What's your, what's a truck that you don't own or a truck that you, uh, you know, from afar you look at and you're like, yeah, that's, that's my style. I really, that's one of my favorite trucks. Mm. God, you're asking some tough questions, man. That's so um, I get paid the big bucks, Chaz. Well, you know, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I've always loved, a lot of the stuff that Boris has done, Um, you know, again, back to my pre-truck days, man, all these X-frame stuff that he's rolling out. I loved that. I loved all those cars. Um, But a lot of the stuff Dell's done, I love it. I'm really excited to see what's going on with these, you know, new Roadster Shop four-wheel drive chassis and a lot of this new four-wheel drive stuff. Speaking of, I've, you know, drank the Kool-Aid per se, and I bought a four-wheel drive truck. So, um, you know, I'm kind of in the midst of it as well. What'd you get? I don't, I don't know. What, 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 what else do you add to the barn? Um, it's a 71 K 10, um, a medium green, original paint. I oh, okay. That. Is that the one you're calling Clyde? Uh, yeah, Clyde. Yeah. I oh. bought it from, a um, a, um, uh, cattle farm out of, uh, Baker, Montana. Wow. Yeah. That one looks pretty cool. Same. So that's the 503 as well, right? Yeah, medium green for, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's 503, but I think they're the same color. You know, they're, they're really yeah. close. Um, yeah, you have uh, you have medium green, you have olive green. I think it's a 503. So, so um, yeah, four-wheel drive, that one will be fun. They look so good. You know, you know what I'd like to see one day on a long bed? I like the long beds in the four-wheel drive. I wonder if somebody will do it, but I, I'm assuming somebody will, but maybe just a, a seven foot bed on a four wheel drive. I think that'd be yeah. kind of, because I, I do like the eight foot bed. I mean, it's just growing up, but it does look a little long. And then the oh, yeah. short beds in the four wheel drive, if you put it on a it 35, looks it looks a little stubby. So mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, I even told Kyle, I'm all Kyle. What do you think about it? Like a seven foot bed um, on a four wheel drive on 35s. I mean, I think that'd be, that would blow people's mind. Cause, oh, cause, yeah. I, Cause I think it would look just right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, man. I, I, I to circle back around. I'm still trying to think of a, of a truck that's, you know, that there's so many out there, uh, you know, obviously several of the trucks, uh, Django that, that, uh, Charlie had that truck is just, uh, you know, so slick, which is unlike me to like, you know, slick paint, but man, that black truck is, is really hot. Um, well, and you brought so up good. Boris. Boris had his 64 five and that was like the, you know, that patina was just absolutely nuts um, mm-hmm. that he, you know, that he had out. So it, it is, you know, there's a the roaster shop truck that just recently sold. Now that truck, you know, hits me, you know, for obviously for right now and the kind of the racy mood, you know, that's kind of going through these pro tour and truck shootouts, that truck hits home pretty well right now with me. Uh, that truck's hot. You know, it's cool. And I just thought about it when you said that that's taken, you said, Hey, I'm a kid, I'm a kid who loved muscle cars. Well, now you've got muscle trucks and, and, you're, yeah. and, and you're like, well, I love patina and yeah. I like the performance and the muscle. And then that's probably what you're going to end up getting with roadie. Anyways, you're going to get the, the patina, you're going to get the power, you're going to get the T56. And, uh, I'm assuming I don't know, like a 410? What, what kind of gear are you thinking about running? I actually what? stuck with a stuck with a 373. The the Magnum I ran was a close ratio 373. And I was really afraid stepping up to a 410, which obviously the six speed could handle, but it would make the close ratio first gear pretty much useless. So I tried to dial it back and and you know make my first gear functional. 
Cool. Uh, do you have a company that you've worked with over the last few years uh, besides level seven that, you know, you've bought parts from that you really, uh, you know, want to, you, you enjoy their, their quality, their customer service, uh, their communication, somebody to, to pass on that you, because you got to look at it like this in the last five, six years, you've built a lot of trucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I like the guys at Carolina truck shop, Matt and Paul, they run a really hot, caught uh um a business over here that they do really well um and then for any other parts i i, I typically go to um brothers truck shop I, I i've always enjoyed their stuff seems to be a little higher quality than some of the other places you can find um the truck shop uh is another really good one-stop shop for a lot of things and obviously usa one man there's several of them out there that you know together provide pretty much anything you could need back to uh, we're being spoiled you know i mean some well, of these guys yeah. that are into these trucks they got like one catalog and we're we've got stacks and stacks of them to go through so life is good if you're a, a c10 slash gm fanatic yeah well uh you know we talked about the internationals and stuff earlier and you know us being guys that can build a truck out of a catalog uh randy my neighbor grc fab he uh he actually restored a 72, you know, first gen for a guy, a blazer. And we talked about it today. He's like, I'm so used to having to build everything for these scouts that I restore. And he's like, we literally just ordered door handles. We, we ordered marker lights. We ordered, you know, a, a dash pad. And he's like, it was so easy. He's, you know, he said it was amazing that, to think that he's getting paid for this because he usually has to work so much harder for his hourly labor rate. Yeah, we're spoiled. Uh, sometimes I don't, you know, I don't know that we really realize it. And especially, it's not even just uh, GM trucks, right? You, you, your Camaro, your Chevelles, mm -hmm. your Impalas. Sure. Uh, there's so yeah. many companies out there that are making really nice parts for us. So we're lucky that way. So, so I'm gonna throw out a count of about ten. Uh, wh wh where are you at? What do you? You've sold some. You bought some. You got about yeah. eight or ten right now. I think I've got eight right now, uh, which is really too many. I often think of thinning the herd a little bit, but again, each truck is, is different in their own individual way for me. Um, so I, I, I try to find one to put on the chopping block and I'm not sure right now that I have one. Um, so, so you I only gave I'm me still... one that you were keeping and I'm, I'm still looking for that second one, man. I'm hoping it's going to be roadie. I'm hoping I'm just going to love this truck. Okay. That's kind of the goal. Um, but for trucks that are done, I'm going to have to go Harlan. I, okay. I'm not a, I'm not a square body guy heart, but man, I love that truck. Yeah. I, I mean, how do you go wrong and tell Rody uh, takes the spot and takes the place? We don't know because you haven't, you know, went to the mail, the post office, you know, just freaking <laughs> laying rubber, uh, pilling out with the T56 and the 373 gears. Um, I mean, honestly, I think that's pretty much uh, what I've got for you. I've got the Sunshine Showdown. You said that was in March. My notes, we've got the, the big dog coming up the 9th and 10th out there in Tennessee. You're getting ready for that. Um, you got, uh, we talked a little bit about the merch. Anything Anything else? So we talked about your show, a show you want to hit, a show you like. Uh, what else? What else is going on over there in Georgia? Well, I mean, I, I guess I'll give a shout out to you. Uh, so it's funny. I told my mom that you had, I work with my family and I told my mom, you C10 talk has literally, you can ask any of my friends has been my background on my iPhone for man, three or four years. Right. So, so to get the opportunity to be here, man, thank you. That's awesome. I enjoyed the podcast. I think, I think my favorite one was when you interviewed the gentleman that, that was, that was the designer, the lead, you know, truck designer. So to, I'm a, I'm a truck nerd, you know, anything to do with, with GM trucks. I love history. So to get to hear how that blazer was put together and how the tooling and die cost was too high to build what it was supposed to be, but yet how iconic what they had to build turned out to be, man, I just think that is just over the top cool. So thank you to what you do and, and bringing a lot of light into some places that, you know, aren't really talked about. I, I love it. Oh man, that that's, that's what it's all about. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's awesome to hear you say that not, not just about me in the pod. I mean, I love the pod and connecting the people, but 
you know, I, I need to hear that about Paul. That's Paul Hitch. And I need to, cause I, I, I got to go out there and hustle up some more of those sometimes. I mean, sometimes it's work and sometimes the guys don't really want to talk and I do need to maybe dig a little bit. Another guy that I had was Keith Seymour who was, you know, working and building, you know, 80, 81 Chevy trucks. And we're getting to that point now where we just don't quite have some of that uh, lineage and that the history that we can garnish to, to pull from. So I do, I need to probably reach out. There was one guy that I did try to reach out to multiple times and, he, and I actually called him cold, called him just like I cold called Paul and uh, he just was not having it. And I was like, really? man, oh, I was so bummed. His name yeah. is Her Harry Bradley Bentley and he designed pretty much the 67, 68. And uh, there's oh. a lot of infrastructure <laughs> on, on him drawing it. And then he went to hot wheels and uh, just a, just a, kind of an angry guy. He just bitter about it or something. And so I did a, I paid for like a search. I found him and he wasn't very far from the C10 intervention in Auburn, California. He wasn't that far from there. And so I'm like, man, I'll go over there. And I just kind of made the decision that even though I want to, I, I don't think the guy would tell me no, if I was sitting there in his face, I just don't, but I just, I kind of looked at it like, if the, if, if the guy doesn't want to be, it's, it's like a girl you chase forever. She don't want you, you know, eventually you're like, you don't want me anyway. Out. You yeah, don't want me. Work out. And it, so, so I'm just like, what kind of interviews is this guy going to give me? Um, sure. A long time ago, I interviewed the guy from SMS, which is Doug. And he's a, he's one. I love telling the story is how he was like, he wanted nothing to do with me. And he was just like, nah, I'm like, dude, give me 15 minutes, Doug, give me 15 minutes. And sure enough, once I got him, he wouldn't shut up. You know, we're an hour into the show and he's still going. I'm like, all right, well, now we're moved on to Volkswagens. This is a C10 talk. So it was good talking to you, but, yeah. but no, I love those. I kind of, I kind of love the old grouchy guys, you know, to a point, but, uh, yeah, if, if you ever come across somebody out there who's got some GM lineage and I, I'll interview them all, man, I, I love that part of it. And I, I almost feel a responsibility at this point. If I can find them, I need to find them. and I need to bring them to the C10 Nation because that's what it's all about. Man, I wish you could have got the interview with the guy from the 67, eight that those two years specifically, you know, they, they're, they're my soft spot. That's those are the two best looking man, that slant hood. Oh, God, and the trim down the side. You know, I, I made a post not too long ago on my Instagram. Everything from the trim to the hood to the the, the door emblems, the RV Junior mirrors on the '68. Oh man, they had it together in those two years. Which there's none. None of the years are ugly, but man, '67 eights is where it's at. Yeah, they're they're uh, almost car like with their design. I'm sure you've seen some of the other stuff from the GM uh, Heritage Center, where the some of the different things they were thinking about doing, what they ended up doing. Um, I will find that article. There's it's on the forum, I believe, 67 to 72. You can find it on Google as well. But his name's Harry Bradley Bentley. He's he was a I think a, a professor at the University of Pasadena, which is an art school or Pasadena Art Institute or something like that. And uh, you see these cartoons and classic truck. I think it was classic truck. I'm sure I have the magazine. They did a thing and, and the guy kind of did a two page write up on it. And you see the, the kind of the characters cartoon that he drew. And you're like, there it is there. That's the 67 truck right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's so awesome. it's, it's pretty cool. So I'll make sure I get that to you. Um, Chaz, that's it. I don't, I don't have anything else for you. I appreciate you, you know, giving me a shout out there. You definitely didn't have to do that. And it means a lot to me to, to bring, you know, all these people together and push this word out there to, to such a great community. So I, I appreciate you and your time, brother. Yeah, man. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad to be here and I've enjoyed it. OK, uh, I think uh, we'll take you out right here for the pod. And then if you want, we'll do maybe a 10, 15 minute walk around and check out some of the trucks. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. OK, for the audience out there in uh, Podville, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks again, Chaz. And uh, we're going to push it on over to YouTube. So he's going to do a walk around. Uh, we appreciate it again. Thanks, brother. Thank you. Late. All right, cool. Yeah, that'll we'll uh, keep it going and then uh, just kind of show us what you got. And dude, OK. I, I'm, I'm from originally from Montana. So it's cool that you grabbed that truck from there. Yeah. Yeah. I got lucky actually, you know, Adam Ponder, uh, he, he found it uh, and he kind of sent it my way and um, he ended up finding he was going to buy it. And then he ended up finding something else that kind of caught his eye um, before uh, he could get it bought. And he sent it my way, passed it along and, and I was able to buy it. So it worked out well. 
Cool. Uh, so unfortunately, my blue truck is not here. My '67 is not going to be in the video, sadly. So maybe, uh, maybe at some point. But I'll, I'll flip the camera around here, and we'll just keep it rolling. Well, hey, real quick. Okay, when you flip it too, show us. Uh, you do have some killer plates, obviously. Uh, you've posted some of those up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I love any you know GM nostalgia. So I collect some of the old uh, original steel stamp uh, license plates. Um, you know, obviously these, the, these things, when you really get into them, have got a lot of really, really cool history. Uh, for example, this one, uh, you see how the USA is really shiny versus one of these originals that's not as shiny. It's more uh, painted. So this was your first generation of a USA one plate. And instead of them being painted, they were actually anodized metal. So this is a very, very early issue steel, very thin, almost junk plate but uh original you know uh, gm that was a 1965 issue plate what does um, something like that run like if you were to sell that on ebay is that valued at like 250 or something um this plate specifically if somebody really knew what they were looking at to know the anodized metal and stuff uh yeah i'd say it'd probably bring 150 to 200 which mm -hmm. is really crazy really crazy to think uh but you know that's today's market um and then uh, here's your, I believe this was the 1969 issue release, the, the standard putting you first in a big way. Um, that was the next release plate. And then this one, the putting you first keeps us first. That was the next generation. E each year had a different slogan. Um, and then this is a 73, 74 was here. And then uh, let's see here. So there's one there. And then this is another one. So they actually made another run of this in 65. And it was what they called an aquaback. So it was a pretty rare blue back. Some of the other ones are green, but it's pretty hard to find an aquaback license plate. Um, you can tell I really get into stuff, sadly. But yeah, they're, they're, you know, of course I got an OK. You know, that's an original OK used cars, which was, a, you know, GM's slogan. Um, just a little bit of everything, you know, obviously, you know, I got to have a 96 rock that's huge for around here. Um, <laughs> and everybody's always like, Hey man, you got your license plate upside down. It's like, no, this stands for turn up. So that's, that was kind of the, that was kind of the thing. So that's, that's your standard 96 rock. And then here's another really cool one. Uh, so Atlanta had the Olympics in 1996 and everybody in Atlanta, did something special for 1996. So here is a one year only 1996 rock. Dude, I, I, I love those. I love both those. I remember seeing that your other one and right out of the gate, I'm like, I, I, I that's such, I love the old radio ones, man. They're so cool. Oh yeah. So, so that one is an original, but on Harlan, I'll show you this one. This is, this was 96 rocks first release of their original plate. So it's, that's a pretty hard one to find as well. It says Atlanta's rock and roll station. So uh, that, that is an original there um, as well. Are so, they still around? No, unfortunately not. Nothing's that cool anymore. <laughs> so uh, kind of a funny story in 97, uh, might, it might've been 97. Now I'm trying to think because, so my buddy went to Emory, uh, um, University of Emory, was it mm -hmm. Emory? Emory, it's actually it's a medical college right uh they, i think they do have a lot of doctor he's an engineer but okay. i flew out there and hung out with them in atlanta and mm -hmm. uh it, it must have been right i don't i want to say that it was right maybe they did the plate before i i feel like it was a 95 or 6 but obviously we know the olympics were in 96 but i'm gonna say that they probably had the um you know, official Georgia plate that you could get. And it has the Olympic symbol on it. Oh yeah. Oh, well, yeah. I dig, I dig old plates. Right. Yeah. So I stole a plate off a car while I was in Georgia <laughs> in 96. Cause I'm like, I'm taking one of those freaking plates yeah. and I still have it to today. Of course. I mean, I, I like That's the old awesome. plates as well. So, so I have that, whatever the state, you know, Georgia release, uh, one was, I like the, uh, the centennials. So I have some centennials, um, yep. Uh, the 76 no so no would that be centennial then 
Was it the bicentennial? bicentennial? The bicentennial. bicentennial. Yeah. And mm-hmm. seven and, and the 1976. So I've got a few states, you know, with the Utah, Nebraska, Montana. So yeah. that stuff is uh, I dig that stuff. And I you know, I, I remember when you posted that picture state. of that, I'm like, I, I might have to find me one of those that upside down one. I didn't know why it was upside down, but that makes me like it even more. Oh, yeah, man. Turn up. That was that was the thing. But, you know, every state did some form of, you know, GM, everybody. You know, I was talking to Randy, my neighbor, GRC Fab, um, even international did a spirit of 76. Man, that was a big deal. You know, 200 years of independence for us. Dude, everybody had something that was almost a trendy thing to do then. You know, GM had it and international had it. Every every state had some form of a of a bicentennial issue license plate. You know, it was catchy. It was what to do. Yeah, I feel like, and I'm just growing up in that time period of the 76, uh, the 80 and the Olympics in 84, man, I feel like just the USA, USA pride was just, it was very, very high, you know, at at the turn of the eighties with Reagan and, and uh, it was, it was very, very high. Patriotism was at an all time high. This plate was your 1976 release, you know, the star spangled banner, you know, steel stamp USA one, you know, right along you know, the time period that, that, that was, was the big deal is, is that. So yeah, right along with it. Is there a plate that you, um, that you don't own that you, you, you look out for every, you know, swap meet or you get online and you search every now and then something. So that was that this plate was kind of that one for me. Um, anybody out there who collects these steel stamps knows that that all the way is probably the hardest one to find. Um, the last one of these I saw, this one's NOS, so it's never been put on. Uh, I kind of looked into this one. I got a great deal on it, but the last one of those I saw sell on eBay brought like over 500. What year is that one from? You know, I really don't know because I I can't even find any history on it. It's kind of an oddball plate. It's steel, but it's almost thin, thinner metal. You know, obviously you can tell the styling. I'm going to go with, you know, the same time period as this, which would have been 65 to 68 era. Mm-hmm. But it has the same thin, you know, steel, but it's not anodized. So it's it's later toward maybe a, a 60, you know, 7 or 68. But I'm not entirely sure. But that one's probably one of my favorites just because of, you know, they're pretty difficult to find. Do you have plates that haven't made the cut yet? So they're, they you you have to look at your board and you're like, well, my board's full. So I've got a couple more that I, I, I need to make another board. Yeah. So here's. Here's some of the, yeah, he's got it the, bad. Yeah. Yeah. Here's some of the excess over here. And then, uh, some of the, my junk table, excuse my stuff, but yeah, a couple that, you know, I keep some local dealer plates. I like to find these kind of plates. I collect any kind of old GM bumper sticker and there's an old GM USA one, but a lot of guys I'll find these at antique stores. And, you know, since I do run the club here for the state, uh, anything that's local, these guys will have trucks that were bought new at these dealerships. So I try to rack up on as many, you know, local dealership license plates as possible. So the guys in the club, if, if they wind up, you know, having a truck that was bought there, Hey, here's your plate for it. You know, everybody loves license plates. Yeah. Kudos for you. That's uh that's cool, man. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. You, uh, you've got it going on. I like your style again. That just adds to it. You, uh, you were, I like to say that I think I might've been born about, mm, five to seven years early or late i should say you uh you might have been born about 15 to 20 years late you know it's it's funny you say that because i, I always struggled with that myself i always wondered like man was i was i born in the wrong generation but as i've grown up i was born to keep it going so yeah, that, that's cool that's, that's kind of where i'm at right now and i'm just gonna you know i guess stay in my lane and, and keep doing what i love um it's just what i love to do yeah. And we love that guys are out there doing it because, you know, whether you, whether we're, you know, uh, right there with you or living through you, you know what I mean? Sure. And and the more sure. you do that for people, like even giving a plate to somebody, you know, some guy, some guy buys a truck and he wants one of your plates and you hook him up. It's like th- that, the gift that probably, you know, you feel like on level 10, you feel like, uh, uh, you know, a nine when you find some plate and then you, you're able to give somebody else a plate. That's like, uh, you know, a 12, you like, I just yeah. made this guy's day and it's just some plate that I had sitting in my, in my shop. You know what I mean? That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's, you know, something as simple as that can start a friendship, man. And, and they'll, they'll look back on that simple, you know, gesture forever. That's something that some people never forget. 
Cool. All right. So, so we've got, uh, we got Harlan right there. Um, how's yeah. the interior? Can you give us a little view of that? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, crimson red 73, uh, again, you know, plain Jane steals and caps, uh, Cheyenne, you know, so I can't bring myself to replace the seat cover. It is the original seat cover. It has yeah, why would you? In it. I just can't, I'd rather look, I'm weird. I'd rather look at this original seat cover and say, Hey, this is, you know, 100% original versus something that's been replaced so even down to the door panels that are you know pretty amazing survivor condition um the original steering wheel you know the wood grain is still you know beautifully legible on the wheel some this truck was just really cared for um the the interior the gauges have you know never even been taken apart but the amount of orange that's in the cluster is so bright uh dash pad man the dash pads uh, the, the Harlan, the gentleman I bought it from said he has never replaced it since 94. So, you know, I don't know if that's the original dash pad. I would have to lean toward yes, but who knows? Yeah. I mean, when I saw those dials, your gauge dials, I was like, I was, that was the, like, I'm going to ask him like, you know, and uh, that's ridiculous. So yeah, that is a very, yeah. very clean truck. <laughs> that is a very clean truck. So original radio, I'm a buff for that. Uh, I love, I love finding original radio. Um, I can't stand when something's been cut, even down to the little, the little stretchy, you know, door panels. They're, they're, you know, the elastic is still, you know, super tied up to the door. Uh, just, yeah, original carpet. Definitely got lucky with this truck. I love, I love too. I know, you know, there would have been a time where the, uh, the scuff mark on the rocker right there, or that would have, yeah. you know, that would have just drove me crazy. But, I love that. And then I might've mm -hmm. saw a flash. One thing I look at on squares a lot or any, really any truck, but is the seat belt dings the door. And I'm always telling Absolutely. my kids, I'm like, you, I'm like, you guys don't let the freaking <laughs> grab with your right hand. My kids know like grab with your right hand and then hit the button with your left hand and then ease the right hand <laughs> back into your, over to the pocket. You know, like you're like, you're taking your wallet out with a cop with a gun pointing at him. Like, Cause right. some, you know, they'll, they'll let that thing zip loose. And I, I'm like, oh, and they're like, dad, it's just a truck. And you're like, yeah. you don't understand. Well, I'm just like you, man. Uh, to me, that is one of my favorite things on the truck because that proves, you know, original rockers, that paint has been there for, you know, 40 years. Uh, you know, that door is just the way it is. I love stuff like that. That's why to me, patina just hits home for me. It's just, it's what I love. Yeah, it just shows the scars and the character and everything that truck, you know, being the name Harlan dessert, it's earned it. It's earned every, you know, little bump and bruise. And mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't want to I don't like adding new bumps and bruises. I don't like that. <laughs> but I but I love the bumps and bruises that, that they have when I get them. Well, and, you know, me, you know, I'll flip the camera around real quick. Me uh, not being a, a, a square body guy. When I first went to buy this truck, I said dude, something is wrong with this truck. And I'll tell you why. So it has no drip rails. Yeah. I said, I said this truck has been painted, you know, and I'm, I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, that doesn't really have a, a noticeable paint line. I'm opening the door, trying to find it. Come to find out 73 was optional, you know, and nobody wanted them because they just come from all those years of bad drip rail rust and everybody opted out on them. So I kind of had a, a learning curve on this truck. Whereas I almost did not buy it because I thought it was really messed with. Yeah. You would have regretted that now that you know what you know, but yeah, for the audience, 73, you, you, uh, you won't see them. It's got the small mirrors, show them your uh, vent window. That's a, that's a great spot for your sticker. Yeah. You've got the, the GA and that's kind of what I was talking about earlier where you've got kind of the seatbelt, uh, style logo and just crisp and clean and no caffeine. So, and obviously the Georgia guys got it going on cause they got the G right. So, yeah, so they got exactly. the GA going where like AZ doesn't quite look as good as the GA. Does. Well, so this, this stick sticker is like the prototype so my my buddy chad uh, is one of my best friends chad rackley shout out to him he never gets on instagram so maybe this will give him a reason to get on instagram but his wife makes decals and she had this just killer metal so this thing is actually like a three-layered sticker so this was like the prototype so when we had talked about doing this i threw this sticker on for one of our events last year just to kind of see what people thought about it and I was blown away at, you know, what the, the feedback I got day one. And I was like, all right, let's run with this. So kind of a cool sticker. Hopefully it'll stay on there for a while. That's, that's the original. 
Cool. Yeah, that's sweet. Uh, another thing about those trucks that I really like with the white top, I'm a big fan of white top. I actually, Yellowstone was pretty much the first white top, non-white top truck that I owned. I, I just always chased white tops. Is going to be your lettering on your tailgate. Uh, mm -hmm. I always, always love that. So you should, uh, you oh, should yeah. have a, a, a white Chevrolet on there. And uh, oh no, you got a tailbag. Okay, so yeah, uh, seventy seventy three four had this piece um that was you know your higher option cheyenne trucks yeah got the, the sail panel there's your this is bizarre to me so this thing had a camper top on it so another thing i love about patina look at this perfect line where the camper top flat road i mean just made this perfect patina mark you know down the back side of this tailgate but it's so funny you know maybe this truck was a monday maybe it was a, a friday and somebody wanted to get out of there but no centering oh yeah <laughs> that is crooked is all get out so it's it's just amazing to me that uh that, and it drives me nuts i have a little bit of ocd so that that one hurts me pretty bad can you imagine uh if if you own that truck from the get-go you would have ripped that thing off because it would drive you nuts and now now you just you you just kind of love it you're like god damn it harlan you're you're off a little bit today you're, you're just not centered right and yeah. and uh it's just funny how that stuff works out it's just that's super yeah. cool man and uh, the personality the it just screams all the more reason I love it. Yeah, you know, it's got some bumps and bruises. You know, you can see that little ding in it. It's it's not a perfect truck, but it, it's it's made a really good one. I, it'd be hard to replace. Fun to drive, cruises down the road, floats floats on the road, and uh, she looks. I uh, oh, just yeah. just looks great, man. Thanks, man. We'll we'll move on to the next one. So, uh, just because it's in line. So this is yeah, Clyde in a seventy one K ten. Um, it's got some bumps and bruises. This thing has spent a lot of time on the cattle farm. In fact, I'm going to say it doesn't have a straight panel on it. Um, you know, it's just, a, it's actually cool. The, the, the original paint stripe is listed on the SPED label as paint stripe. So I thought that was really cool. Um, had some old gross vehicle weight stickers. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, you can see the 6,000 gross vehicle weight still there. I tried to buff on it a little bit, but couldn't get rid of it. Um, you know, the, the quality arm mark, everybody loves the arm mark. That's one of my favorite things on the patina is, is, is an arm mark, good old four speed truck. There's nothing nice about this truck other than it's, it's pretty solid. You know, again, it's got the rocker mark every, you know, every truck has the rocker mark. Uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because it is a pretty significant thing that all original trucks have, but just a fun truck. Yeah. So was it repainted? No, it, it's, it's original paint. Um, I just, I took these off. So, and if you feel the paint stripe, it still literally has the paint stripe. It's actually painted on. You can, feel I just saw that gas cap and I was like, I wonder if they did that or tried to shoot, shoot yeah. over that. Cause yeah, that would, so, so there's you that one. And then here's uh here's roadie. So we'll ease over to it. Check this out. So the gas cap gold. Wow. Yeah, usually oh, yeah. I, I see them white. That's funny. Yeah, so then. Hey, you uh, said something about, about Clyde, and, and I just wanted to kind of, you said there, I think you said something like there's nothing pretty about it, but the irony yeah. is it's gorgeous in, in a whole, as a whole. You know, it, it's so funny how, yeah, you're, it's just a, it's, a, it's a sweet truck, man. Look at that tailgate. Look at that bumper. Old school, dude. Yeah. So, so really funny story. I've added the camper top since it's been here in Georgia. Um, but really funny story about the tailgate. Uh, the tailgate actually did not match on the truck. Uh, it was a donor that was, it was a, a form of green, but it did not match at all. This tailgate was sitting on my front porch as a tailgate bench. Literally, uh, that's one of the reasons I fell in love with the truck because I had a use for the tailgate. So if you look super close, you can tell they're not a perfect match, but I stole this off my tailgate bench. This was given to me by a guy, God, probably five years ago because he said it was ruined because it had a couple of dings, a couple of dents, you know, but you talk about something that just fits this truck perfectly. So I swapped tailgates over and kind of the rest is history. Yeah, that's, it just adds to it. And you got a period correct topper on there. Uh, that's, I mean, that thing looks clean. It adds to it. And boy, we think, we think you were an 80 year old guy going to breakfast, uh, in that thing. If I passed you on the road, 
That's right. Yeah, this one's got some cool history, too. I, I love local history. So this thing was sold new in Claremont, uh, which is just, you know, 15 minutes down the road from me. So that's kind of got uh, some neat history to it. Not, not to put you on kind of a weird like, I mean, I think you're going to respond to it the way I want you to. But what does that truck smell like when you sit in it? Oh, man, how do you describe it? Uh, you know, let's see. Is it is it just old school? Is it musty? Does it just smell like an old farm truck? It, it kind of does, man. It kind of has a little hint of maybe some cologne that somebody's tried to dust over over the years. But yeah, man, the inside is just you know fifty years of dust. This thing stayed on a on a um, on that cattle farm for years, and uh, literally the dash is just. I don't think you could get all the farm dust off of it if you wanted to. I tell you what, they probably didn't wear their buckles a lot. They look really good from what I'm seeing here. They're, they're belt yeah, buckles. They, they are, they are yeah. really clean. That's funny. That's probably the nicest thing on the truck. Well, a lot of times those, that's just amazing. So a lot of times those will get tucked in. They don't, they're sitting underneath the, you got the saddle blanket, you know, cover that looks perfect. And yeah, God, I'll show you this. This there's is, too much, this too many ADD things I'm seeing. Every, every little thing I see, I'm getting excited. So look at this I, again, me, you know, original paint. I love the way stuff patinas, but check this out. So I don't know if you can make that out. Yeah. East or West. It says East or West. Now, one thing that you probably won't be able to see cause it's so little, but this teeny tiny little square, if you can catch it just in the right light, it says beef B E E F, which is the cattlemen's association. Yeah. So if you look at this as a whole, it says east or west beef is best so it's an old cattleman's association sticker that literally was stuck on this truck and burnt into the paint dude that is that, that is cool it almost looks like you can see kind of a, maybe there was a cow there is that what that looks like to yeah right there kind of hard it's kind of hard to tell but you know I, you can just see b e e s and then here is fuzzy but you can see here it says B E S T. So East or West beef is best. Oh my God. That's cool. So, yeah, have you, you done know, any searches online to see if you can find another one? Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know, that was literally like, as soon as I could decode what that said, man, I hit eBay quick. I hit Google images. I tried to hit everything I could to try to locate another one, but no, nah, no such luck. You might need to uh, talk to your, uh, talk to your sticker gal and have her make, make, make you one of those or something, a one-off, but even cooler that That's it's right. still on there in its own form. Well, yeah, you ain't getting it off now, man. That thing's melted. What'd you end up naming that Clyde? Was that the owner? No, just kind of looked like a Clyde to me. You know, right. I had, had nothing to do with the owner. Um, I just, it kind of looked like a four wheel drive kind of manly name. So I liked it. Cool. Cool. Well, let's, uh, let's see a couple of, I mean, I see roadie there, whatever you, whatever you want. Yeah. There's a bourbon Jose. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Jose newly named Jose. Dude, it looks uh, like yeah. a Jose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, we, we, I've enjoyed this. We actually drove it uh, on the South leg of power tour down to Hampton a couple of years ago, me and two or three of my buddies, we took off for the day and, and went and enjoyed it. So we, we had a ball. I'll show you uh, the, the interior that I was talking about, not necessarily, my style but i guess it hasn't hurt my feelings enough to change it yet but you know of course you got the arm mark i'll flip the phone around arm mark here uh, i'm sure you have a, a rocker mark oh yeah you know well there's your part you there's your parchment door panels i mean those speak yeah. to you right oh yeah, yeah scrolling. There, scroll. you mentioned the scroll came into play yeah your spot on there uh, 69 was one of the first years and you can see it's scroll there uh, still scroll with all matches. The headliner's still in it. Pretty decent for what it is. Again, patina cruiser. It's not perfect, uh, but it's been a, it's been fun. Yeah, I, I dig the color too. And then um, I'll, I'll I'll we'll check out uh, my ochre and white truck here. So yeah, this you know sadly this truck just doesn't doesn't even get driven that much just because I'm more into patina, man, and I know that's crazy. Um, but I, I love it. I, nonetheless, I, I really enjoy this truck. My wife really likes this truck. She'd probably get rid of me if I got rid of it. So, um, just, and it, you know, it's a lot of reproduction parts. This is not a, you know, an original barn find kind of truck. So, so that's a 71 then, right? Mm -hmm, 71. Yeah. Yeah. So it's got the mirror on the, uh, so, so 
if you if you look not only is the mirror there but for the audience um i i've been meaning to do a youtube video on this but if you if you go back up to your mirror a 71 cab is the only cab with that indention right there that's the only cab you'll see with that yep. that's how, that's how you tell you have a 71 even if they moved it to the glass if you have that um, embossment or whatever in your cab, then that's how you know it's a, a 71. And there's a few other little things that you can go through. But I tell you what, man, that paint, it must have been early, early paint. It looks good. It looks it looks OG. You know, I mean, you could I'm sure you like you said, you found where it was an overpaint. Well, but I will say it's old. If you, I don't know if you can be able to tell on iPhone. We could t we're we're getting really we're really get oh, okay yeah we could see it that's yeah you see the the crow's feet what I call crow's feet where the paint's kind of cracking from age so yeah I mean this truck has been painted for for quite some time uh, but at the same time if my my thought is sorry my fingernails are nasty been working on my truck tonight if I see this I think well this happens well before rust bubbles through so if this is going on and there's no you know significant rust anywhere the truck must be relatively solid bondo free well and I wonder. Do you think they painted over? Is the do you think the original okra is there? It's just painted over. I mean, did they prime it? Was there, you know, do you see bondo you know, anywhere or do you know? No, I don't, I don't see any bondo cracking anywhere. You know, this this fender is the same way, you know, on the top, it's kind of hard to see again. You might can see it in the light, but when you get over here towards the um the cab area around the get the gas cap off where you can kind of see but around the, the door on the top, it's just got some, some definitely some old paint going on. It just kind of, kind of is what it is. But, yeah. Uh, the rockers have been replaced in this truck. I always look for the spot welds, unfortunately missing on this truck. That's a telltale sign, but you know, sped label says it's an original tack dash truck, whether it is or not, who knows? There's so much reproduction these days. Well, if it, if the if the spit says it, I mean, in, in yeah. AC, and I'll tell you what, man, that's a that's a good looking truck, a decent looking, look. and like you said, it's a runner, so so it's one of those trucks where because it isn't the pristine patina, it's it's it can be a runner. It, it is a shame that you can't drive it more. Right, you got to keep the cool rest, man. If you oh. guys aren't on, the, if you guys aren't on the cool rest kick, you got to get on this. Yeah, they went way up. I had two in Yellowstone about five years ago, took them to LST. And then uh, those guys over at uh, Low Sierra bought every single one. So this is throwing me off. So that's a 71. Mm -hmm. This is going to throw me off. This is let me show you some open your door there, please. There's mm -hmm. your driver door. OK, so this is this is where some damage has happened to this truck in my mind. Mm -hmm. So if you if you look, you don't have a 72 dimple there. So that's a, that's the original right. door to that. Side, that side has one so that door has a 72 dimple but mm -hmm. it doesn't have 72 uh door handles because the door handle on a 72 will stick out and that's why mm -hmm. you have a pop out in your trim so that truck got hit i'm just throwing this out there i'm not saying it's true or not but something <laughs> happened to that door it got hit they put a 72 yeah. or newer door on it they repainted oh, yeah. it oh yeah i'm sure you know and who, who knows i mean this truck's probably been fixed three or four times, you know, yeah. who knows, who knows the real true history behind it. But, but that's yeah. another telltale for the audience. If you, if you're looking at a truck and you see a dimple in the door, then that's a 72 truck or at least a 72 yep. door. Yep. I had to learn the hard way, man. My dad was looking for a blazer. The blazers had them multiple years. So that was kind of a, a learning curve for me. I did not know that. So, so the funny thing about your dad is he's a Ford guy, but I think somewhere along the lines, you said you were driving your dad's blazer, which was a newer blazer. And now he's mm -hmm. talking about other blazers. So even though Ford's might've put food on your table, it sounds yeah. like he's still a GM guy. My dad literally a uh, Tuesday of this past week bought this truck. So welcome to the truck world again, dad. He bought a 87 uh, two wheel drive and this is a two owner. Um, man, this truck is a phenomenal survivor. 100% wow. original, original interior door panels, original seat cover. The original mats in this truck are just nuts. Fuel original injected back. black with a red interior, that dash, those knockoffs. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's definitely a cool truck. It's uh, so. even, even that seat, look at that little, you know, that's kind of cool too. That little wrinkle he's got going there. It's got, yeah. it's got some tears. It's got some places. That's okay. You can see some a little bit of wear right here, but again, I'd rather look at this and see a GM seat cover. Yeah, that's cool. Is he gonna? It looks like it's a, a four by four. Obviously, it's it's just 
because you haven't lowered it. Is he going to keep it that high? What's he plan on doing with it? No, nah, so and that's that's what's funny. So my dad called me uh, last Wednesday. It had the truck for 24 hours at this point in time, and he said, "Are you home yet?" And I said, "No, I'm at work." He said, "Come by the house." I pull in my dad's driveway, and he's got a Bloody Mary in one hand and his credit card in the other, and he says, "Lower my truck." Yeah. I said, I, I'm, I caught hell my whole life. You guys don't know this for lowering all my trucks. You know, to him, he says, you're squatting it down. And I'm like, no, dad, I'm lowering it. You know, so to hear him, I had to clean my ears out. I, you know, so to hear him say that is uh, cool. I'm having some influence over him. So, yeah, the wheels in the back of Harlan are for this truck. So, okay. Um, uh, well, it's getting the, uh, the McGoy uh, 5.7, 4.6.5.7. Yep. Yep. Same thing. Pretty much the same kit uh, that I had on Harlan is going on this truck. So pretty cool. much identical. So uh, and what wheels I saw them. I saw them. They were tossed up in there. What wheels are they? Yeah, they're just Americans. You know, okay. good all Americans. Uh, 315 35s, 245 40. Yeah. Um, and stuff them in there. Yeah, pretty. pretty and then well. he's running. Uh, he's got a throttle body um, or a fuel injection. Uh, 350 mm -hmm. in there. No, it's yeah, well, body. Actually, yeah, it's actually 305. Unfortunately, oh, okay. But, but it's just such a good. The luckily, the previous owner put a 373 gear in it, so it helps the 305. You know, at least be drivable. Cool. So this is the truck that has. I'll, I'll flip this light on over here. This is the truck that's been taking all my time. I feel bad that I haven't worked on my dad's trucks, but. Um, so, so yeah, this, this is uh, this is route. This is roadie roadie yeah so oh damn look uh, at that motor mama 68 you know 50th uh to me just man like i'm a patina guy and this thing is just it's kind of got the look you know to me the every, everything about it you know it's got the right amount of patina on the cab and um actually funny thing i'm gonna check for a rocker mark i haven't looked in this one but yeah 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 got a, the original rockers got got a, got a touch of rust right here but again original rocker i would not replace it for anything i'd rather look at that little spot of rust a lot of uh, times i'll look under the door there and you know look up under the bottom of the door and is, if it hasn't affected the bottom of the door then you're like hey right. that's it's no problem right i love the rv junior mirrors that look like they don't belong i love them you know i love yeah, your i love your custom uh your custom yeah. emblem yeah you know so this man, truck right. looks a lot like my picacho now my picacho wasn't the 68 people think that are an anniversary truck people think that it was that's what i was going for um uh -huh. but yeah i love love that style that mm -hmm. two-tone you know everything about it yeah yeah I'm, I'm 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 looking forward to this truck so it looks junky but if you look underneath it um pretty well you know all new ride tech um Borgson quick steer box. Um, not much, not much old down there. Um, you know, like I said, LS3, uh, just, literally just got the cab set on uh, two days ago. So, so very little has been done here other than some test fitting, throwing my accessories back on, you know, test fitting there. Um, you going to run AC? Yeah, at some point. I actually was measuring tonight. It looks like maybe factory AC will clear. So I may try to run that. What headers are you running? Those are actually speed engineering and okay. uh, ah, for the money, dude, uh, they're hard to beat. I, I had a set of the uh, Doug Thorley tri-wise that I ran on my last truck and they are very nice, but they're two and a half times the price of these things, $289 shipped to your door. It's nuts for the money. Oh, and they fit in there nice and tight. Oh yeah, man. They're, they're, they're amazing. This is a Holly black cart uh, swap kit for a T56. So kudos to them. That kit is, is really nice. Fit and finish is perfect. Your firewall um, looks really good and looks clean. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm a little bit of an original guy. I couldn't bring myself to clean it too much because you've still got your 551 gold, which is your, you know, uh, 551 AA is your uh, anniversary gold poly color. Yeah. I think so, it's five. Is it 551 with the 501 with the white? Uh, you know, I maybe. If you, you know, I'm, I'm, if you uh, open your, uh, if you open your, uh, it'll say, it'll even say the interior. If you did on the glove box door, it should say, yeah. do you have a spin? Yeah, yeah, it says, it says uh, 551AA, yeah. or AA 551, let's see here. Four, oh, so five, it, it had AC, it had uh, aftermarket AC. <laughs> oh, yeah, that under dash. Yeah, so let's see here, uh, 4551AA. So, yeah, and then off-white and gold, yeah, so 4551, yes. and then, oh, yeah, look at that. So 
and then I should have, I Got think the, the CST button in here. Yeah, that's getting harder and harder to get for sure. Oh yeah. So I'm curious. I want to pick your brain while while we're on this subject. Okay. So after taking these two trucks apart, I found something that's very interesting. So, and if you look in here, I tried to leave it on the firewall. I don't know if you can see it on the phone or not, but it says the number four three three written in there 433 so as i was taking this truck apart that number was written there it was written on the inside of this fender the bed that i had it on when i took the cab off when i took this cab in front clip 433 was written on the headboard of the inside of the bed where and and so funny thing this truck has number 389 written on it here this fender on this side says 389 were these trucks numbered coming down the assembly line so i i don't know that i've never heard that but when you tell me that that's what i i'm I, that's my first thought uh, my first well, thought would be that um that they would do that to keep all the parts together so that would be crazy but well, um i'm sure I, yeah you could almost you know find out you know through yeah. some mostly the forum but um yeah, I, 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 that's what I would think. I would think that that would be your your production number. Sure. Hey, hey that's cool. a cool shot right there. I might have to take that. You've got the C10, the C10 Nation, the the Pro, the AZ Pro. Uh, oh, yeah, you're, you're, shout out to AZ Pro. I'm yeah, look at that. You're spoiling us. And that, we're in the corner. Nobody puts us in the corner. We're in the corner. You got the syndicate guys. Yeah, that's, that's a yeah. – all right, cool. Yeah. So, you know, it's funny. Another funny thing about these trucks, and an old-timer taught me this, he said these trucks were what they call panel painted back in the day. So the fenders were painted in one place. The doors were painted in another. So if you see, this truck's 100% original paint, but the cab and the door does not match. Yeah. So that may make sense as to why this thing had – everything was numbered. The other thing I was told is – um I'm trying to make sure I say it the right way, but how you, you on these trucks, you'll have your red oxide on your doors and your cab, and then mm -hmm. you'll have your black primer on front and rear. Yeah. So yeah, and that, that was the so. same thing. They said, Hey, they were painted in different um, factories and that's, they used the, the dark black on the, you know, on the cowl on the fenders on the hood at a different place. And then they did the cabs and the doors and they came from different. And the factories. cab has got the rust oxide underneath it. So yeah, I mean, I, I've never even thought of that. That's a good point. That, that's kind of, and, and, and I'm thinking exactly. And then we might get a comment or two from somebody that listens, but um, that they probably were just numbered and they made sure, okay, well, we got to, we got to, you know, account for all these parts and these paints and so on and so forth. I know, I never, I don't, remember ever seeing a total production number of anniversary sure. trucks uh long or short uh but right. uh i used to chase them man i had a couple i bet i even have a guy in my phone to this day he had a, a 50th i used to call him like once a year hey you want to sell your 50th hey you want to sell your 50th and then i just built picacho and kind of put that put that uh that that uh, cr the, i guess that passion that i felt like i had to have or that yeah. obsession that i had to have it i put that one to bed enough to where i wasn't as worried about it anymore right well you know uh, back to the funky colors on these trucks man to me like the gold isn't exactly an attractive color but it's it's just cool it's era correct and to me it patinas really really well well and and going back to the the gold that i had for picacho it's a brown it's more of a brown where an anniversary truck and i don't know where you have your seats but that we could show the audience too that might be watching that there's a, definitely a difference in the seats but uh, an anniversary gold is going to be it's just a just a tad more gold you know gold like a gold bar it's funny you mentioned the seat so i took the seat out the other day and it had a cover on it this is the long bed project that i did sell so this was the uh original paint bed and stuff wow that's that a truck. nice truck so i took the seat cover off this was you know this was the bottom yeah and i got feeling around one day and i was like man this thing still got the original cover underneath it so i took the top off and yeah man you can see man that original gold anniversary seat is just awesome under there it does have a tear on this side but uh so will that will it. that bench go in the in the long bed or will that go in roadie so um this specific bench i'll probably strip the cover which is blasphemy but 
I'm going to get with Chris Snowden um, probably to do some something similar to this. So still do the SMS, you know, the fabric from them to do the inserts. But I want to update it a little bit, make it a little more like his, you know, basically do his styling uh, and twist on an original GM 50th seat. Yeah, maybe. Uh, get, so you're going to get the Snowden contour. You know, like you said, you yeah. might race it a little bit and run it hard. Yeah. And, and uh, so you get a little bit, a little bit better seat, you know, and then give it right. that look and that appeal. Right. So um, I'll show you a little bit of what's going on back here um, on how I did a few things. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, this stuff's been powder coated. The frame has kind of struggled with where to bring my brakes out. So I ran all stainless steel bent brake line, stole this from Bowman. Uh, put a little 90 degree 3 a.m. into this ride tech piece. Uh, so brought the stainless line down to here, drilled and tapped the cover. So ran my lines that way. Um, put little uh, wire, uh, welded little tabs on here to hold my bulkheads for my 3 a.m. tube nut, you know, brake lines and stuff. Just trying to tidy. I tried to do all this before uh, I put the cab and stuff on. Ran the fuel system. So all the fuel systems completely done. You know, I try to put the regulator as far back to run a short return as possible. Boyd's fuel system. What uh, what rear duff cover is that? That's Mosier. Oh, okay. I tell you what, you know, kudos to you, Chaz, for a guy who says he's not very mechanical uh, inclined, uh, mechanically inclined. You are, you're, you're, uh, you're doing it, you know, and going back to your international buddy, um, it might come in a box, but that, you still have style in that and, and your cleanliness and just making sure things are tidy. Uh, you're, you're, you're doing a good job. So it, Thanks, it looks like you're, you're really picking it up. So up here at the front, I couldn't figure out how to bring my brake line to fight with it around the header and bringing it outside the frame. So I don't know if you can see this, but I ran two little three AN bulkheads through the frame. Yep. So um, kind of see a little cue there so we can see it. Yep. Yeah, so that'll be the point in which my master cylinder ties in to those two for my front and rear. So once the master cylinder's put on, it'll be real easy to bring those straight up from that point. So will you have a end. proportioning valve and, and then you'll run like a springy uh, brake line down or how do you envision it? Um, I'll, prob I'll probably do a hard line, um, 3 sixteenths. I ordered the braided, uh, the, I mean, not the, ordered the 3 sixteenths stainless line today. So I'll hard line it from there, probably contour up the firewall here and then kind of come out, you know, in some bit of sequence together to tie into the proportioning valve. Yeah. All right. And just uh, actually hid my fuel system under here. Um, you know, factory, they come in this way. And I actually just ran a, a little 90 degree fitting backwards, um, you know, and attached to the head where it's all kind of hidden under the full cover, but yet, you know, works functional. Um, just try to keep it tidy. Other than yeah. that, man, the truck's going to be a, you know, just a, a patina driver. That That's kind of the goal. You know, I don't want anything that I got to paint, anything I got to keep clean. I just want to drive it. I want to enjoy it. But at the same time, I wanted to put it together where it's reliable. So are you going to put um, some Dakota Digitals in there, a smaller steering wheel? What, what are you going to do on the interior? So I actually bought, you know, since it's a manual, yeah, let's get a look at the T56. Sorry, that's a fail on my part. Uh, the interior is very far from done, obviously. But um t56 uh six speed uh magnum so this is a shifter from um bowler performance so it actually puts it just in perfect position you know first second so it's going to be perfect it's what they call a mid shift shifter so it's going to be perfect location to keep an original bench seat that you don't have to cut perfect uh, so that that's going to be cool uh, I'm a sucker for original gauges, but on this truck, being that I really need a tack, I may run a set of RTXs because they are just super sexy. Yeah, um, they are. But holy cow, that's another, you know, $1,100. This thing's eating my lunch right now. So, oh, come on, man. Do it right. Dude. You're, you're, you're all right. So, you cut your, you had to cut your low hump out. Are you going to put a high hump back in or what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah. So, actually, uh, uh, you know, a shout out to uh, level seven. They actually make, I'll walk over here and give them a bit of a plug because again, I built a truck out of a box. They offer a full drop in high hump for a T56 Magnum. So boom, buy it, ship it to your house and it clears the tall shifter location all the way back for a Magnum. And so, I believe that's fiberglass, right? 
It is. Yeah. yeah. They, they make a fiberglass piece for it. Okay. Uh, really nice fiberglass though. Sorry, this truck's a wreck. Um, but kudos to them for making a lot of parts and again, making somebody like me be able to build a truck at home. So Chaz, I just love how you're, you're, you know, modest and you're, you know, sorry that the places are, you know, rack the shop, dude, people are just Googling, you know, nonstop. So your, your shop looks clean compared to most. Um, you just got my eye. My ADD is going to kick in here. Your B pillar. And there was there a camper on that truck. Look at the way that it, it patinas up over the rear window. Yeah. And, so there was, um, and I, I can try to send you a, a photo of the truck when I bought it out of the estate sale. It had the same style camper as Clyde, big, tall boy. So yeah, it came up way over the top, and uh, th this one had it, and the original cab did. So th that's right. This truck was the one that was the donor. So this truck was from Mike Cofield. You know Mike Cofield out of Alabama. He originally owned this truck and i'll send you some pictures of it as well it had a camper top on it yeah um, so definitely yeah, you can stuff. see some of that on there so mm -hmm. dude you're killing it uh you're using some amazing companies obviously jesse's doing what he's doing helping you along the way um you've got a, a great group of guys and your style is i could see where you're you're uh hello we haven't even talked about the boat when do you have time to go to the lake brother so that was my first love man before i got into trucks i used to fish all the time fished in a club and now it's more of uh i just got to keep a boat around because if i don't have a boat i just i literally like i'll just be looking for one to buy and i love this boat i've had it for a year or two and i'm just not selling it i used to buy and sell them a lot too and, and try to make some money but i'm keeping this one i'm making you uh I don't, I don't know if you have plan on having kids but you might not want to have kids bro yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy hobbying pretty good right now. So it'll be a life change for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, everything you're doing, your shop is awesome. Um, I can't wait to see it in person someday and come visit you. Yeah. I'd love to have you, man. Come on. Yeah. We're going to, we're looking forward to getting out there. Um, jazz, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for the tour. Uh, we'll keep kind of watching what happens with uh, Rody, and it's a clean yeah. truck and you got rad styled. So if you ever doubt yourself, you know, just remember we're pushing you from behind and letting you know, like your style, your, your, just your, the detail and everything you're doing is spot on. I appreciate it, man. That means a lot. I think, I think the thing is you're saying, Hey, four or five years ago, you're listening to C10 talk and you're listening to all these builders just realize that even myself, I'm looking at you, man. I, I I'm looking at the style that you're doing and, uh, and the little things you're doing and you're taking things that, you know, maybe Boris did and maybe Dell did, and maybe somebody else out there, you know, did. And, um, you, you, you know, Jesse, and you take all those things and now somebody's looking right now and somebody's going to watch us and they're going to be like, shit, I'm going to do what Chaz is doing. I, I like his style. I like how he knows about the patina. I like the patina too. It gives me that tingle you know yeah absolutely all right cool absolutely well thanks Man, for the tour it. thanks for the pod uh dude everything you're doing keep it up we'll we'll stay in touch and uh if i don't talk to you you know uh kick ass and have a good uh, swap meet i know you're having a local thing there at your place and then yeah. before you know it you'll be getting ready uh getting everything ready especially roadie for uh c10's uh so southeastern truck nationals that's right. Yep. Yeah. It's just about five weeks away, six weeks away. So yeah, I got a lot to do. And for us, it's nine 25 here, AZ time. That means it's a, uh, it's midnight. So it's already, uh, I guess Friday yeah, morning 12, there. 1230 here. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, tell your mom and dad that you're late. You know, you were on OBS talk and that's why you're late to work. That's right, man. I'm, I'm proud to be here. Okay, brother. Thanks for everything you do. Thanks for everything you do for the community. C10 club, C10 club, Georgia. Chaz, appreciate it, brother later man thank you You guys could check him out i know we kind of talked about it but super rat chaz at super rat chaz and uh i believe you do have facebook mm, yeah i have facebook too yeah yeah so it's both there so either way wherever you want to check it you know we'll share everything that he has and and uh, put it out to the world but if you uh if you don't know who he is uh between c10 club georgia and then uh super rat chaz you can you can find him right on all right brother thanks man thanks man see ya